long ago. All right, everybody. Well, I think we're rolling. So welcome, everyone. This is a special episode from Iconic Production of Exploring Glorantha, where we will be exploring 13th Age Glorantha. Uh, I am the co-host of the uh, Iconic Production show, Exploring Glorantha, along with Jam. And uh, I'm Evan. And these are my amazing players. Uh, we are going to be running through an adventure uh, in, uh, in Glorantha, uh, a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, but before uh, we uh, jump the into path. the background of our uh, story, but... meet our cast and uh, and uh, ride off into adventure, uh, a few acknowledgments. First, of course, Glantha is uh, uh, the um, the brainchild of Greg Stafford and uh, is is uh, curated by uh, Chaosium. Uh, 13th Age is published by Pelgrim Press, Fire Opal. Um, 13th Age Glorantha is a production of Chaosium, Rob Hainso Games, and Fire Opal. Uh, our frame art is by the amazing Patricia Baker uh, and uh, used in kind permission of uh, Patricia, uh, uh, Tricia, and, uh, and Tim Baker of uh, Escalation Magazine. Um, it is art that is from a forthcoming, don't ask me when, because I'm still working on it, but a forthcoming special supplement for 13th Age Glorantha from Escalation, which will be a free fan publication uh, available on the internet called Red Moon and Warring Kingdoms. Uh, our battle maps today are from Mr. Valor 2017 at Valor Maps on Demon Art Creative Commons license. Uh, attribution required, and thank you, Mr. Valor. Uh, we will be playing on the free virtual tabletop Albert Rodeo. Thank you guys for making Albert Rodeo. It's amazing. And of course, this is an iconic production. Now, let me go to the players and let them introduce themselves and uh, their characters. If you can tell us uh, your character's name, uh, class, uh, runes, and uh, backgrounds. Um, and uh, let's go to call first. Hi, my name is Call. I will be piloting the valiant Alaros. He is a comrade of Yanifal Tarnals, which is sort of a, uh, it's, it's like the lunar version of Humat. So Alaros is, is uh, very valiant, very dedicated to the mission. His uh, his desire is to serve and die for the red goddess. And <clears throat> he's a combat oriented character with um, powers to help force others into a form of valiant behavior, which maybe they're not accustomed to. I'm very excited to participate. Thank you. Good. And what runes does Alaros have? Oh, forgive me. Not at all. Al Alaros is um, has the runes of the moon, of stasis, and of death. Excellent. And uh, let's hear from Mark next. Hello, I am Mark, and I am playing Abasai Surin East Point. Lunar Healer, um, in the name, I'm the healer and slight buffer at times uh, for the group. And I have the Moon Rune, as I think most of us probably have since we're learners. Uh, the Life Rune, specifically Fertility, and the Rune of Man. And my backgrounds, uh, I was advisor to the King of East Point. I was a warband healer, and I was also a court bard. Terrific. Thanks, Mark. And Kirk, who are you? Hello. My name's Kirk. You'll know me on, uh, on the uh, channel as Phantom of Truth. Otherwise, today I am playing Later. Later is uh as far as things go is a uh, 
Branch Sage of Iripi Ontor. And I have totally already lost the voice for him too. That's crazy. <sighs> anyway, where were we going? Right, the runes. The runes will be Moon, Truth, Dragon, and Nuked. His backgrounds involve Magecraft, Researcher, and Fanatical Dwarven Convert. Because Mustal doesn't know what it actually wants. It just thinks it knows because that's what it used to do. Very good. And and so uh, just for our, our, uh, our viewers, uh, later is in fact a renegade apostate Mustali. Is that correct? That would be correct. Excellent. All right. And then last but certainly not least, Ben. Who are you playing? Hello? Introduce yourself and tell us who you're playing. <laughs> I'm Ben Parker. Uh, if you watch other iconic productions, I often chat as Ristar96. Uh, today, I will be playing Tunstog the Tormented. I am a penitent uh, and a follower of Dan 5 Charon. The only uh, way for a prisoner or criminal to regain acceptance into uh, the Lunar Empire society is through uh, penitence and suffering. Uh, so uh, I am a former criminal. Uh, my background is uh, riverboat trader and con man. I served time in a prison in Perth, which was overrun by the Kingdom of War, allowing me to escape. And I have been scared straight and have chosen the righteous path. My runes are mastery, moon, and death. And if I can do it, his voice sounds a little bit like, I have a brilliant and cunning plan. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, the one other thing that we should point out, we are playing 13th Age in one of the uh, uh, great tools for uh, character development. Uh, is the one unique thing. So I'll quickly round Robin and if every, uh, each person can tell me their uh, one unique thing, uh, then we will get right into the play. Um, Call, what is uh, Alaris's one unique thing? Well, during uh, Alaris's career as a hero quester, he had formed a special bond with the Mastali and through his deeds that he did to uh, preserve their existence in this part of the world, they uh, went on a mystical quest to create a steed for him, which is a, um, a rather huge clockwork ram, which seems to move in um, very interesting ways. It will, uh, as he rides, it will hold its uh, hold his weapons for him, and when he dismounts, it will actually transform into a shell that encases him, and will um, appear as armor around him. So he has a little bit of a look like a transformer. You'll see on the screen the uh, the picture of Alaros, and behind him is what his form looks like when he is inside of that shell. Excellent. All right, Mark, Abisai is one unique thing. Uh, Abisai is the secret heir of Jar Eel, uh, which I found in Prince of Sartar. I guess, is it a fan comic? Uh, I mean, it's an official comic. It's written oh, it's official, yeah. I, I found it. I found it as a great story, and I'm like, huh, I think that's uh, that's a good one unique thing. Yeah, what what that uh, inheritance means and how it relates uh, will would be something revealed over many stories. But uh, that is an awesome, one unique thing, just as this uh, Clarkwork Ram is. Uh, and uh, later, your one unique thing. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, mute. <laughs> Later's know. one unique thing is heroically returned after being killed by other gold dwarves for having found 
something that irreparably broke him regarding Mostal. Doesn't remember what that was. Excellent. And that's uh, the one unique thing. That is definitely terrific. And Constag, your one unique thing. While I was imprisoned, I had the fortuitous occasion to save the life of a crime lord. And in return, his thankfulness has made me respected and a member of their community, even though I have eschewed that way of life. Very good. All right. Well, we have our heroes. They are from the city of East Point. East Point is not within the Lunar Empire. It is from the far-flung lands in Fronella, uh, a, a land to the west, uh, a land that uh, up to about 100 years ago was under a bizarre curse, something called the Syndex Band, which isolated each community and city uh, from one another, um, which is something that happens when uh, a hero quest, uh, during a hero quest, um, somebody assassinates a god. Uh, but that's a different story. In any case, something called the Thaw happened, uh, started happening about 100 years ago. Um, and, uh, or no, not 100 years, started happening maybe 20, 20, 30 years ago, and uh, freeing the um the various communities unfortunately one of the communities that was freed was one that had never been seen before called the kingdom of war the kingdom of war now rampages across Frenella, uh sacking cities subjugating peoples enslaving and sometimes eating entire communities um and so the war uh which um uh east point the city state that uh, these heroes are from uh, does not stand alone against, but um, uh, it's a the Kingdom of War is a is an existential threat uh, throughout this uh, area of the world, um, and uh, there are two other lunarized city states. They are independent from the Empire, but they uh, all accept the truth of uh, the uh, wisdom of the great moon goddess Sedania. And uh, those other two cities are um, uh, Riverjoin and um, South Bank. Oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, so those, the, the, the collectively, they are known as the Aeolian city states. Uh, and they, they have banded together for their own survival. Uh, joined by their fervent belief in the uh, deliverance and promise of the uh, the teaching of the of the red moon, um, but uh, uh, they are cut off from the empire. And though the empire, once the ban lifted, had uh, restored communications with them, uh, those communications have been long on uh, on declarations of uh, of uh, friendship and brotherhood and short on actual material support because the Lunar Empire is busy elsewhere. Um, so uh, as we uh, prepare to set our scene, uh, uh, the first thing we need to do is our rune rolls. What rune has uh, been attuned? What part of the universe has uh, synced with the, the lives of our heroes and may play an important role as we play our game. So uh, each of you um, can roll a D6 and uh, we'll go round robin and uh, see if one of your personal runes has attuned or whether some strange uh, additional rune uh, is influencing your destiny. Constog, I see that you rolled uh, a three. And uh, that means that uh, you um, can uh, select one of your runes, uh, uh, personal runes, as, uh, as the one that is attuned this session. Uh, which one is that? 
basically your let's, number three rune. <laughs> let's go death rune. All right, there you go. So remember, mark that the death rune is uh, is is the one that has the most influence for you uh, at this time. Excellent. Uh, call. What's going on for Alaros? Leave that to one. You roll the one. Okay. Well, what's your number one rune? Probably the. Uh, that's the moon rune. There you go. Well, the moon is is then the the powerful force, which being on a mission for the glory of the uh, uh, the power of the the moon. That seems very appropriate. Uh, what about for Abasai? Abasai rolled a six. All right. So you, must, you must determine which random rune has decided to help or hinder me. Right. Well, uh, give me a d20 roll. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, the d20 roll could actually turn up a, a rune that Abasai possesses, in which case um, it will be especially empowered. It was uh, seven, 17. I forgot to clear out the six. So uh, 17. 17. All right. The spirit rune uh, has attached itself to you. The rune of the other side, the spirit world, the uh, land of the dead and the not yet born. So... Uh, how will that uh, affect you? We shall see. And finally, later. Roll the two. I'm sorry, two. Two. And what is your two, number two not rune? to flip you off? <laughs> uh, two Perfect. is actually truth. Truth. All right. So, death, moon, spirit, and truth have attached themselves to the party today. So then uh, another thing, of course, that happens at the rolling of the runes is that because later is uh, a uh, not in sync with uh, uh, the uh, ways of Mostal, uh, we have to find out how exactly uh, the uh, operating system is running on this particular model. So if you would like to roll on the, uh, uh, on the broken tool rule uh, table. Yep. Where is that? Find out. So you're saying later is a broken tool? Yes. Well, from a certain We are absolutely a broken tool. We're no longer that kind of tool. Uh, three, which seems to say plus 20 temporary hit dice because your damaged programming has your body become harder or softer in response to stimuli as a byproduct you withstand damage better all right so plus 20 temporary hit points uh those come off the top um but uh, will be uh, potentially useful um uh very good all right so then finally the last thing is what is the moon today? We are going to. Um... It's full, right? It's full. Right? <laughs> so, uh, the um, the looters are, of course, influenced uh, deeply by uh, the phases of the moon. In Glorantha, uh, the moon goes through a uh, seven-day uh, sequence of um, of. Uh, light and darkness across the face. And uh, depending on where you are in Glorantha, uh, it is slightly different because an invisible and mysterious satellite is in fact circling the moon and casting the shadow upon it. Um, so in Glorantha normally, you know, in the old days, way long back, we would uh, of course carefully follow the calendar to find out because the moon progresses regularly, but this is 13th age. And so I have here cards, which have the phases of the moon on them, and I'm going to shuffle them. And then because Tonstog is the penitent and everything is his fault, uh, is. he will tell me when to stop and I will pull the 
the, the top card and we will begin our determination of what phase of the moon rules this adventure. So go ahead and let me know, Tansag, when to stop. Sorry, I'm. And stop. Okay. Top card is, oh my God, the full moon. <laughs> I should have taken that card out. No, it was. Tan Tansag has pressed the I win button. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I am not, I, I have powers that I am not allowed to use on the full moon day. Unfortunately, justly punished will not make an appearance in today's gameplay. There you go, because in fact, the blessings of the goddess rain down upon you and you are supercharged. You are at least two Red Bulls to the wind. Um, and, uh, and so, <laughs> um, so we won't get to see how all of the um, the now. I will say, uh, in the, in the supplement coming out, you know, you were not going to be running the characters through on a full moon every time. And in fact, if we had been playing for a long time and there was perhaps a, a campaign loss in their background, this is Thirteenth Age speak. But uh, look it up; it's a great game. Um, I, I might say, oh, almost full, but maybe it's. But the cards are telling a story, and the story is that the goddess is with you. So you are all on your mounts, riding forward to, uh, to your target. Previously, you had been called to the great hall of the, um, of the, uh, the central institution of East Point, the College of Many Arts a sorceress college founded in the time of the uh, renegade sorcerers known as the God Learners. But it has survived. It survived the destruction of the God Learners and has uh, remained as a repository of, of mystical information uh, and, a, uh, and a place that draws uh, the, uh, the wise and the insane to delve into the deep secrets of Glorantha. Um, so uh, you were uh, called uh, into the Great Hall uh, to receive um, a commission from the Chancellor of the College of Many Arts. Uh, the, the commission was, had already been sealed by the King of East Point and the High Priestess of the Red Moon. Uh, this shows the gravity of uh, this charge to you, and uh, the uh, commission was that, uh, quite extraordinarily, recently the, uh, the king, the high priestess, and the chancellor of the college had been uh, uh, delivered messages uh, from the empire, from the emperor himself, that the emperor had decided to bestow a gift upon the College of Many Arts, something that would be of great interest and great aid, not only to the college, uh, but to all of the Aeolian properties, and would also be of great importance to the emperor and the empire. This was to be dispatched by a moon boat, a flying structure, uh, a, a, a ship that rides upon the beams of the moon, uh, which would uh, fly this gift into East Point. Uh, and moon boats are, are they're not common, but uh, they have been visiting East Point and the other Aurelian cities for many years now, because the first outsider who uh, arrived at East Point when it was under the ban was in fact, Jaril, as a one-year-old, leading a band of infants uh, on a, a mysterious and arcane mission on a moon boat, uh, which sat down in the great square of East Point and began the end of uh, the division between uh, the lands. So uh, moon boats have come uh, frequently and uh, they have a route uh, following the great river uh, that uh, the cities are, are ranged along. Uh, unfortunately, this moon boat did not arrive. And a seer was consulted, and the seer saw that some disaster befell the moon boat. 
it fell from the sky and crashed into ruins of a lost city. Well, that is, the people in the city were lost. This, the city is, is present. Uh, it is uh, about a day's hard ride, uh, fully with, with full equipment, um, up the river in what was once a rival city-state uh, called Dalsar. And before the band, Dalsar and East Point competed in everything and even fought battles and wars against one another. Uh, but at the end of the band, Dalsard emerged a ruin, bereft of population, accursed, and generally avoided. Uh, it is not known what happened to the population, uh, why they did not survive uh, the isolation as so many cities did survive. But it's not unknown. There were many communities that disappeared. But this was a thriving city. Tens of thousands of individuals had uh, lived there and now uh, they are all gone. Um, so uh, it is, uh, it's not a good sign that the moon boat crashed down in the middle of this city. So you crest uh, the, the rolling uh, uh, ridge of a plain and laid out before you are the ruined walls of Dalsar. Somewhere within is the crashed moon boat and what's left of her crew and most importantly, and the only thing that you must return with, the gift of the emperor. Uh, can I uh, activate my spirit rune? Of course. So since this is an affront to the goddess, as we approach the city, a spirit comes to inform us, instead of searching blindly, where the boat went down. So we have a guidance of where to go. Very good. So indeed, the spirit does come to you. Uh, and um, it is, uh, strangely, a spirit of one of the Dalsardians. They have been awakened by this intrusion into their crypt. O oh, people of the moon, you waken us. You disturb our, our, our rest. We were entombed in our own city. And from the sky, pieces of your moon have fallen down upon our city. I can tell you there are two places where the the uh, pieces of your moon, your goddess, her physical body have found purchase. Uh, one is uh, towards the far wall uh, of, uh, to the northwest in the city. There, the assailants of uh, your your uh, compatriots, your fellow believers, um, uh, search for the fragments uh, of the uh, surviving vessel. So too, pieces of it fell uh, closer, near to the gates here that you are coming to our city. I cannot see what doom awaits you, but uh, fragments, have been gathered by other invaders uh, of our of our crypt, uh, and uh, there is mm, a great disturbance there. Uh, I, but uh, words taught to me long ago uh, are stirred. Perhaps, perhaps this is their meaning. The hero age will come again when the nameless man returns and the great wolf howls at Sog's gate. The staff of Erinsor can open the gate of Banir again. Woe to humankind if the three weapons of Taylor are not together. 
a wise man told me this once long ago. It does not fit. We are Dalsardians. Sog City lies at the other end of the river. And yet, great, great events are beginning. Uh, and the Spirit does give you a sense of, of where to go uh, for the, the, the two rather vague uh, hints it gives you in terms of the location. But, uh, but you can go directly to either one uh, using its, uh, its um, uh, the description that is given of the, uh, the ancient layout of the city. Thank you, Dalsarian. We don't wish to intrude upon your crypt, and we will leave as soon as we have recovered what we came looking for. You will find that there are, there are souls that have been made restless by these intrusions. They may be hostile to you, but I wish you peace. And the spirit fades. Now, um, we, we were provided a, a picture of a beautiful boat. Have we ridden our mounts up onto this boat or are we, um, are we traveling by land? Oh, you were traveling by land. Yes. Uh, the, the, there were no moon boats in East Point to travel, to uh, have you travel on the, uh, the beams of the moon. Although it being a full moon day, you would, uh, you would have uh, traveled swiftly. But um, uh, the, the only alternatives you had were either to ride or to be laboriously rowed and, uh, and, uh, and uh, depend on the uh, uncertainty of the the flighty air gods to uh, fill the sails to move the uh, move a uh, a uh, ship up the river. So you opted to uh, ride like ride like the wind, but uh, avoiding the wind because you know those wind those air deities they're just not reliable. Nope. Very well. Uh, yeah, the lunar goddess is, is with us, so we have almost no chance of failure. That is true. So should we hit the near gates that are before us before we go northwest? As the spirit was unable to see the dangers ahead, perhaps it would be a good time to use me as bait once again. That sounds like a great idea that should definitely I mean, be done. Happen, the worst that can happen is I will be severely hurt, and that will help me gain approval with the Red Goddess. So, I mean, win some, lose some. It's all winning with you, even when you get harmed. Very true. <laughs> The way you say it, though, is not comforting. All right, so I will mount. What's it meant to be? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm on my mule of shame, Seamus, uh, and I will, uh, <laughs> I will uh, charge with Seamus towards the front gate. Um, uh, um, uh, hmm. Okay, uh, I will. Uh, I will use my uh, con man background uh -huh. to. Um, uh, oh, I'll. Uh, I will. <laughs> I will arrive in false distress. I'm being chased by terrible people who <laughs> obviously want to abuse me, and rightfully so. <laughs> All right. Very good. So um, uh, let's have a roll. So. <clears throat> When you uh, roll uh, for a, a, a kind of a skill check in 13th age, you um, uh, you uh, roll uh, a characteristic uh, bonus. So in this case, as sort of a deception, uh, I think that's probably a wisdom bonus plus your level 
plus your background as the bonus. So roll a d20, add all that, do all that math, and tell me what you get. Okay. All right. Um, plus four. Uh, I do not know my wisdom. Do you off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head, but... Um, I they add it. If you look on your character sheet, yeah. If you go down to the bottom of wisdom, it has all the bonuses. You just have to add your background to that okay. bonus. So I or, or minus. I will have a twenty-six. All right, that is uh, that is a pretty significant success, uh, even at seventh level. So excellent. Uh, just for future reference, I'm going to open a few things to have available. All right. So as you uh, ride Seamus, the mule of shame, uh, in through the, the crumbling uh, city gates, uh, it, you... Um, you do appear to be in fear and distress, uh, and uh, you are also uh, sort of quickly surrounded suddenly by a bunch of wolves and individuals who are um, dressed in uh, the clothing of, um, you know, uh, of hunters of uh savage hunters which you are uh um uh familiar uh with in general there are um the the people who are uh who claim kinship with their totemic animals uh and the the very um common ones in this part of the world are the reindeer people and the bear people but the wolf people uh are um are virtually unknown um and but there's there is no question in your mind that you face the the hunters of the the god telmor the great wolf god that are somehow squatting in this old ruin and they've just sort of jumped out around you uh they don't seem to be very happy to see anybody coming into the city. Do, do we all see that or just Tonstag? Uh, well, Tonstag rather um, precipitously uh, rode through the city gates uh, where somewhere the moon boat is down um, uh, to uh, try to draw you know some attention and that worked. Uh, you, the rest of you see him go through the gate and you see one wolf sort of run across uh, the gate uh, and uh, that's unusual. Uh, wolves in cities, even ruined cities. Um, uh, but uh, uh, he's now behind a substantial wall, so you're not sure exactly what's going on. Um, Tonsag, what would you like to do? And then I'll go to your compatriots and find out what they want to do. Um, <laughs> Des despite the danger to myself, which is not important, I will scream loudly in thankfulness that I have been saved by all of you cute doggos. <laughs> but I'm yelling it so loudly as to warn my friends in the distance that um, something, something terrible <laughs> may have happened. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, uh, uh well um it, of course this is a, 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 a not maybe the expected uh response uh to uh for these folks um perhaps uh to uh, keep up the uh, deception um or confusion uh let's have a a, a role i'm thinking you're probably going to roll con man um uh, along with the uh, uh, charisma based role. So uh, looking at your charisma plus level bonus plus your background. Give me a roll and we'll we'll see what these folks think. 
okay, that one wasn't as good. <laughs> They're taking meats back on the table. Yeah. Um, but, um, okay. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. Let's say, uh, that's a 27. Oh, that's better. Uh, so they, they hesitate. They, um, uh, and, um, they somewhat lower their, their flint step tapped that flint tip spears. Um, the wolf, uh, the, uh, the wolves, the wolves, the wolves, which you can see that each hunter seems to be paired with a single wolf, uh, a large sort of dire wolf sized wolf. Um, uh, they, um, continue to sort of lowly growl, but, uh, but, uh, with somewhat less menace. Um, Seamus is not wild about this um, situation that you've brought him into, but he's he's holding it together as best he can. Um, let's uh, then go to uh, uh, our uh, our other heroes. Um, the real heroes, I like to think of them as. What the... Alaros, Abishai, and later, what do you want to do now that uh, that uh, Tonstag uh, has just shouted that he's surrounded by, thank goodness, doggos and hunters have found me. Oh. As, uh, as a worshiper of the Lunar War God, I suggest that um, we'll probably have to dispatch these creatures, but let us... Uh, move forward and aid Tom Stogg's bluff. We shall move forward and and shout that he is a, a pri escaped prisoner that we demands be returned to us. And perhaps uh, we can actually turn that into a, a negotiation with these wolf people. <clears throat> you agree? I do. <clears throat> and And as we... Right down, do I know anything from my years of advisor to the king of East Point about wolf hunters in the area? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, what, uh, give me an, uh, an intelligence base to roll with that background. Okay. Oh, it was so close to a 20. <laughs> uh, 15. You know everything. Oh no, you know nothing. Um, no. Uh, so, um, I mean, uh, no. As, as advisor to the king, um, the uh, there are many uh, of the um, animal people who live. Uh, while the the bear and the reindeer people are the most numerous, uh, there are also wolverine and bobcat and porcupine people, uh, the, uh, the the mysterious and dangerous owl people, um, but um, the wolf people are uh, are really a legend. They are believed to be um, um, uh, to have essentially been driven out um, or at least into deep hiding. Um, centuries ago uh so um uh nobody that you know has had any experience with them they, they are believed to uh exist in uh in in neighboring regions where they fled but um uh, the uh the idea that they might be active here in Fresnella is a, a new one i've heard that the wolf people always escape quickly because their stuff is packed. <laughs> no you possibility down, for you. I suggest to my three or two companions who are with me um, that they were probably driven here by the kingdom of war since they're not normally in this area. And maybe we can make allies of them, heathens though they are. 
That Indeed, sounds like that a fantastic enough. idea that you should probably champion. I agree. I will take the lead, and I will I'll let them know that they shall fear us. So, on the um, on the uh, clockwork ram, which is uh-huh. very noisy, yeah. I will lead the uh, the movement towards them, shouting, "Where is the prisoner? Who is taking our prisoner?" Um. All right. Yeah, very well. Nice. Very good. So you move in through the gate and you see just beyond um, the, uh, the, the, these hunters um, with, um, with one hunter and their wolf brother sort of keeping an eye on Constag uh, and Seamus. Um, the, uh, the others sort of move and are, uh, are ready to um, sort of fight or they're in their fight or flight sort of uh mode they're they're assessing you and um and just as uh the all three of you come into view um all of the wolves raise a howl um that echo across the empty dead city um and uh one of the Telmori warriors, uh, hunters, steps forward and says, who are you? Um, he does speak in, uh, in a common tongue uh, to uh, Fernella. Um, uh, and um, uh, both Abasai and later uh, would be, would know that their, their, their native language is a, is a, uh, is a speech that is shared by uh, their wolves and uh, many beasts, but uh, they they do uh, learn human, uh, more civilized uh, languages. Um, and uh, this person uh, seems to be able to at least communicate with you uh, in uh, in uh, in the trade language. I am um, Luna. Um, do, do we we know who the uh, the best talker is in our group? I have a fairly good charisma. Mine is fifteen. Yeah, mine's probably the weakest. It's my weakest stat. But um, I, I, I will move up forward and say that we are looking for our prisoner. He has escaped us. It appears that you have him. Do you wish to barter or fight? Why are you here? This is, this that, is our territory. <laughs> We are here on the mission of the goddess. You will release the prisoner to us and step aside. And I use my courtly bard voice to try to influence him. There are many gods and spirits and goddesses. What what goddess do you speak of? Queen Dizola. We do not have queens among my people. But you have the moon, the same moon that hovers above our cities, hovers above your forest. The same moon that we worship is the moon that your wolves howl to at night. In a way, are we not one and the same, worshipping the same red moon with our different howls? And then our prisoner opens his mouth and makes a better argument than anybody else has so far. However, he is still our prisoner, and we would like the prisoner back. If that is by fight or by commerce, we do not care. However, we also are willing to do both. 
uh, it's clear that uh, these uh, these individuals have never met anybody, any any collection of individuals anywhere like all of you. Um, and uh, the Munai, the 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 Talmori Thane, turns back to Tonstag and says, "You." speak for them yet you are their prisoner yes i am their forced mouthpiece as their prisoner often i am forced to go forth and do things that would be more dangerous and unacceptable for great heroes such as these hmm. yes you, you do not smell like the runt wolf, but maybe you are like the runt wolf. Um, I will gladly be a runt wolf. At least he gets a turn at the tea. Uh, <laughs> well, we here live now. This is, this is, these are our warrens. But, but there are strangers here. Strangers have come before you. And you speak of the moon. The red rocks fell from the sky. They have given us more strength and power. Uh, if you worship that red moon, then, then perhaps we are brothers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worship it. He worships it. He worships it. This guy worships it. You have not seen four people who worship the red moon harder. Uh, the, the, uh, Telmore's, uh, Telmore's great son, the, the great wolf of the underworld, Jurok Dolgbar. He is our he he has kept us safe for for many many generations and he has led us here and now we have taken possession of some of these glowing rocks that fell from the sky they have given our chief and our and our shaman great insight uh, if uh, and our pack has been harrying those other invaders. Uh, are, are they your enemies or are you friends of theirs? No, they are our enemies. I propose we join in driving them from your lands. Because once we have what we came for, we shall leave. And this what once again, mean? be your. What have you come for? Mark to Evan, did they describe the gift? <laughs> uh, just that it's in a box. We look for a box. Mm -hmm. It strange. was on the ship that crashed here. Mm -hmm. One of these things that you people who live in the in your in your handmade caves uh, value the things that you carry. Um, uh, you are strange, but. Uh, it is unlikely something that we would want. So, um, well, you know what they say. Can help you. People are strange when they're strangers. Faces look ugly, <laughs> and I'm alone. When you're strange. Um, uh, later, would you make um, a uh, a a, a knowledge type role. So an intelligence plus level plus appropriate background, something that you would this uh Magecraft researcher. Uh, sure. Researcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Researcher. Uh, yeah. So you want the intelligent okay. Uh yeah. do, 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 do. where is at 13, 24, 27. Oh, yeah. So 
uh, of course, you've read a good deal about the wolf people. And uh, many, several ages ago, they, uh, they followed uh, an important uh, uh, figure known as Nysalor. Uh, some a a figure that is uh, that that the red goddess uh, has uh, has brought back into uh, reverence um, a a, um, a god of insight and uh, illumination of uh, secrets um, and uh, but uh, Nysalor was uh, was accused of having a dark side. Um, uh, and uh, was fought against by a, an ancient hero who uh, cruelly ended the uh, reign of Nysalor and his empire. But once the empire reached into Fernella and, uh, and Nysalor uh, gave the gift of greater control to the wolf people because he, they served in his armies. Um, uh, but um, uh, Nysalor knew the secret that, uh, that chaos was part of the world was part of the universe um and uh and so his gift had a a chaotic component uh and so the the wolf people were cursed um to uh uh when when nice lore was destroyed uh to have to actually follow um their their bestial nature on um on wild day now normally no not normally now in some places wild day is on the day of the full moon but that's not the geographic area where you are it's not wild day today um, uh, and i have not put up my uh, list but anyway it's another day so they are not due to be forced to go into ravening werewolf mode um today uh but uh, so they already have this chaotic nature, which is not abhorrent to you as a lunar convert. Um, but uh, the Thane mentioned that their uh, tutelary uh, spirit is Jurok Dolgbar, uh, which is the underworld wolf of chaos. So these these guys are more chaos than than usual, which is still okay, but while chaos is part of the balance, chaos can get out of balance. So you do have the sense that you need to watch yourselves with this, that uh, that that things don't don't go wildly off the rails dealing with this particular pack of Telmori. Um, Do they like my proposal to fight against the enemies to drive them out of their lands? Do I need to persuade them? Uh, why do you think that we need help? I did Are not say you needed help. I simply offered our assistance in driving them out. The sooner we recover our box, the sooner we leave. I believe our enemies are also looking for this box, and it would not be good if they find it first. Not for you or us. Just like the Red Goddess sent you those rocks that have empowered you, she has also sent you these three great heroes. Whatever they have been sent here to do or want to do, it's blessed by the goddess and and probably thus by your guy dog bark you know the one you mentioned dog bark and and so therefore you should allow them like you guys should all i'm you shouldn't listen to me but <laughs> but he this guy's really smart and he's and you got you should do it <laughs> mark uh uh give me a roll <laughs> Uh, a a a persuading you know charisma based uh, yep. persuasion role. Where are we? And I think uh, I'll use my experience as advisor to the king because sometimes kings don't quite get what they need to do. So you gotta indeed guide them in the right direction. Very true. As I need to guide them. 
Okay. Twenty-three. All right. Hmm. Yes. If if your enemies and our enemies are looking for this box, then then you should you should find and take it uh, as quickly as possible. We will take you to where. Uh, we believe they um, are going at the, our shaman has said that there are more of those rocks uh, in, uh, that, that fell from the sky in another part of the city. We can take you there quickly. And uh, if uh, our, our mutual enemies are there, then, then we will drive them away. And uh, you can take this box and, uh, and be gone from our hunting territory. Agreed. All right. So they, um, they, they're still a little perplexed by, uh, by Tonstag, you know, the prisoner who seemed to be escaping, but then it's like, yeah, give me back to my jailers. Okay. They let you all gather together, and uh, some of them run off in different directions. But a a, a group of four four hunters and four wolves um, uh, stay with you. You uh, quickly move along the streets. This once was a very beautiful city, and uh, you can see that uh, different things have collapsed, and some things were maybe deconstructed um, uh, to to build other structures. Um, it's, uh, it's still um, unclear what happened. Um, later is sure that he had time to, you know, invest in inspecting various ruins and things. He, he might have a, a better idea of uh, what happened, but uh, that's not the mission. So you move rapidly through uh, Dalsard, and uh, I'm going to bring up a map over on Albert. A map! A map! Put away my dice box. I've noticed in VTTs, anytime you put up a map, the players kind of get more focused. It's kind of like when you're playing at home. Yeah. When you start putting minis out and drawing something on a map, they all get focused like, uh-oh, combat. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes. And, uh, of course, um, the uh so uh, in mentioning combat of course yes a, a map tends to implicate combat but it doesn't have to uh uh um but uh but there's always a good chance once you put down a map that uh, that some, some tactical is going to happen um and uh and if we are going into combat i should mention to you that um that uh uh, all of you watching, that because we've drawn the full moon, um, in 13th age, uh, normally there's a little bit of waiting before the escalation die kicks in. Uh, however, for and for the lunars, sometimes on uh, weaker days of the moon, there's a lot of time before the escalation die uh, kicks in. In the forthcoming supplement, Red King, uh, Red Moon, and Warring Kingdoms, coming soon. Um, however, the blessings of the goddess have rained down, and it is a full moon day, which means that they are full of energy, and the escalation die will start at two. Should we come into combat? I mean, maybe we're just going to talk the whole game. I mean, and that would be a good adventure too. But here we are on the map, um, and uh, as you come in. Uh, I'm sure you can all see, I, well, I'm not sure. I hope that you can all see that uh, you're moving in from the uh, right side of the screen. And uh, there's this uh, big red uh, marking on the map. That is, in fact, the shattered remains of the moon boat. Um, and uh, there are uh, some wolves menacing some uh, individuals on, uh, uh, on ghostly horses. But uh, uh, the, uh, 
individuals who are ranged around uh, this area and seem to be um, like they have been held off perhaps by some power or magic of uh, lingering around the moon boat um, uh, are clearly members of the kingdom of war. Uh, now, of course, there are no particular uniforms, but uh, you know, the kingdom of war in some ways is a sort of disordered, uh, it, some would think of it as a rabble, and yet it has been one of the most effective military machines in the last uh, you know, decade in this uh, area. Uh, and these individuals have extraordinary markings. They are wearing um, armor of, uh, of high quality and uh, each carry um, unusual symbols uh, and markings that, uh, that set them as distinctive with, uh, with uh, runes of uh, death and battle uh, disorder uh, uh, and, uh, and other uh, markings that they are of their ferocity and their mercilessness. Um, if anybody would like to uh, get a sense of what uh, unit or part of the Kingdom of War these folks are from, I, I, I would entertain roles. That's probably for later to figure out. He's the learned bookish dwarf. There we go. That that sounds like a great idea. Um, I do have actually. What do I need? Just intelligence, and then researcher uh, again. Yeah, researcher. Or do be... you need like a talent involved with this as well? No, no, not at all. Just. Uh, I mean, if you had a talent that you wanted to expend on it, I wouldn't discourage that. But if you want to just make a skill roll, that should be fine. Um, one moment, because I have. Uh... And once we actually start combat, I want to do something, Evan, with the escalation die. Okay. Very good. Okay. Where's my? There's my guess. Um. Is genius always on? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, oh. It's hard for me to turn off. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. I did not realize that was always on. But I think that's also already added in, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember. Okay, then. I, uh, no. no, that's okay. It's all good. Because uh, I will... Just for grins, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn the uh, daily for my dragon, for my dragon newt. Ah, okay. Mind, which uh, it's gonna it would the the die roll would count as a natural twenty. Okay. Giving wow. me a thirty-five if all things are added together. Okay, you know everything about these people. Uh, so the um. So this is the, the these individuals are from the bodyguard of the ruler of the kingdom of war, a demigod known as Lord Death on a horse. Catchy title. Um, and uh, and you know about these that um, that uh, you know they they are the most fearsome of the uh, warriors of the kingdom of war they are usually led by a uh, a uh, a captain who has dedicated themselves uh to death and probably been uh into the world of the gods and uh and gained fearsome uh powers therefrom and uh the the death captain is always uh, advised by an acolyte of uh, of Lord Death on a Horse's consort, Esdeen. And Esdeen is a high priestess of the, the gods and goddesses of chaos, 
Um, and so <sighs> one of the acolytes would surely be, um, you know, a potent sorcerer of some sort. Uh, uh, and uh, the bodyguard ride on these ghostly steeds, which which reside in their souls, and they can, you know, uh, produce be produced at any at, at any point to to ride around. They are in some ways more intangible than a you know an actual warhorse, but in in other ways they are you know tireless and you know do not eat and uh, and cannot be you know. Um, cannot without great magic be uh be slain they might be driven off but then they could be uh, you know they would regenerate and come back so uh these are fearsome foes uh, are these if, if these are the ones that that actually brought somehow brought the moon boat down then then the kingdom of war knows something about what the emperor was sending and they want that thing uh off Over Tostog, dead body, they will. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top, yeah. later we'll give <laughs> that out. Absolutely. Um, otherwise, for my point of reference, are these akin to the Black Cavalry or the Shadow Cavalry? I can't remember who they're called. Uh, oh, the like the yeah the Black Horse Troop. Yes. Um, the Black Horse Troop, uh, no. Uh, okay. The the, uh, the Black Horse Troop did come from this part of the world originally when they were the White Horse Troop, but the uh, the Black Horse Troop ride demon steeds, uh, and it's in fact the the steeds are more powerful and dangerous than the actual riders. The riders come and go, and the, the steeds stay. Uh, no, these are these are uh, mortal individuals who may have you know sold part of their parts of their soul. Uh, to the underworld or or uh, voyaged into dread realms to to gain powers okay. um, but they are they are they are not equipped like the the black horse troop okay um, all right so um uh you can see here on the uh, on the board that there's some wolves sort of uh, uh, engaged with or menacing uh, a couple of riders and uh, then there's another rider that's close to the um, uh, the uh, shattered structure of the moon boat that has crashed uh, here and uh, and uh, there are some some other folks riding around um, what would you like to do uh, it um, uh, what is your plan before we start? rolling dice okay well here's a question that will influence it uh, who is nearby and who is far away ah that's an excellent question so are they all nearby? um i'm gonna take out the laser pointer uh these folks over here are nearby this person's nearby this person's nearby and this one and uh these two up here are just on the far away uh side of things okay and the ones that are far away are the special ones uh, um uh so uh, this person here appears to be the death captain okay and this person up here appears to be some other special person possibly uh, that acolyte Possibly. Okay. That's okay. They will all die. <laughs> By all of us, they shall die. <laughs> Might I suggest that we geek the mage? Uh, uh, I was going to say, let's help these poor doggos. <laughs> and I think the doggos will be okay. So. Um, to, to, to answer a question, so uh, a couple of those wolves were already here, and then they have been joined, and uh, and uh, the uh, the hunters have, uh, with uh, with some of the other wolves, have uh, faded into the the ruins and are perhaps circling around. Um, they are uh, 
it's clear that they have been running hit and run operations against the bodyguard um, probably the whole time the bodyguard has been here. They've been uh, popping out and peppering them with uh, with uh, missile weapons, uh, you know, having the wolves jump out at the horses, which is not as effective against the ghostly horse as, as a real horse, and then fading back. Um, but uh, but with you all, they're like, oh well, uh, a, a a straight on assault. Go go right ahead. So, um, uh, having pointed out who's nearby and who is far away, what would you like to do? So those unfamiliar with the, the 13th Age and 13th Age Galanta, all the ones that are nearby, the one, two, three, four, five tokens that are nearby, you yep. can move up and engage them as part of your movement. Yes. There is no counting squares. So if someone wants to go up and engage the captain or one of the other ones, that's you can do that. Far away would take a movement right. and you wouldn't and be attacked. In a round, you have three things, three generic things you can do. You have a move action, you have uh, a standard action, and you have a quick action. Um, and uh, I should have done that. It's, it's uh, you have a standard action, you have a move action, you have a quick action. You can turn. Uh, some of those things can devolve into. So you can use your standard action also as a move action, um, and uh, uh, and play around with uh, with that structure but um, uh, you should be thinking about if you have something that can be a quick action and a standard action you can do both of those in a single round as well as move all right and it is the uh, it is the full moon and uh, so I'm going to put here uh, on the battlefield um, a, a note. So the escalation die, much to my regret, is starting at two. Well, since we're mentioning that, I would like to do my invocation of leadership and increase it to three. All right. And that is a standard action or quick action or what is that? Yeah. And it, we can, we can say that I see here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's in the in the uh, in the uh, once, per day is a quick, once per day is a quick action as That's my domain occasions. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. That's so part this of the is a, domain. This is a daily and uh, uh, and a quick action. All right. So uh, on your initiative, the um, the escalation die will be three. Now, normally, we would also have a, a lovely indication of the waning die. That is how much extra you might have to wait before the um, the escalation die kicks in as a lunar. However, the waning die is at zero and likely to stay that way because, again, the bounteous glory of the goddess rains down upon you. Um, all praise your name. All praise. All hail the Reach and Moon. Uh, okay. Uh, let's have some initiative rolls, please. Actually, before before initiatives. Before initiative. All right. The uh, our actions will be dedicated to the glorious red goddess, and <clears throat> Alaros will be invoking glory of the goddess, which at the start of each battle, before you and your allies roll initiative, roll a die four. A number of your allies equal to the roll gain the following benefits of your choice plus four to your initiative um, or plus two to your ac for the first round of combat excellent and i believe that's a two so and i assume that um Alaros automatically gets it and then plus the allies up to two allies is that correct uh uh what was the wording on that again that's um the wording is at this uh at the start of each battle 
before you and your allies roll initiative, roll a die four. A number of your allies equal to the roll gain the following benefits of your choice. Right. Right. So it's just for your allies. This is something you okay. as a commander give to them. Okay. That is. Um, so it will be um, a bath eye and later, unfortunately, see Mrs. This, this is all his fault. So <laughs> he's not unfortunately able to get the benefit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. So the, and they're each going to get, um, well, a bath side is going to get plus four to his initiative and later we'll get plus two to his AC for the first round of combat. Actually, no, we'll, we'll give that to, we'll give the plus two AC to, to, um, to Tonstad so that okay. he'll uh, be, be more confident in diving into the enemy. So a bath side gets plus four initiative. On stock plus two AC for the first round. I'm, I'm probably guessing that later is not going to try to engage in combat, but I don't know hey, how brown sages do things. You gonna throw books at them? You never know. Um, he 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 carries he, he carries a two-handed romfia romfia, uh, a a long uh, a long cur uh, forward curving blade that you use in two hands and uh, to mess someone up so well he is that. a dwarf so his two-handed sword is like a short sword uh no it's it, it's a little awkward i mean that's why you can carry it on the horse but um uh, have you seen the have you seen the uh the the, the guns that he has they're, they're actually, well, wait wait he has guns they're like they're they're like a rock <laughs> Very good. So now you want initiative? That, that's, a, that's a different story. Yeah. So let's have initiative. What die is initiative? Not that it matters for me. Oh, a, a I'm always going. Uh, that's a, a, a D20. But D20. Uh, yeah, you. I'm always going last. There's more for the listeners. <laughs> oh, what the stupid box. <laughs> It was on 18 and it flopped over to five. Yeah, it's it it it, it cruelly simulates a real die. Um, <laughs> I right. actually have negative initiative. <laughs> How can you have negative initiative? Because I rolled a five <laughs> and my character has an automatic minus six. Ah, uh, yes, but 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 uh, that's minus six from what would be your normal bonus. Which, if you look ah. at your character sheet. Your uh, should be here. highlighted, right? So you, uh, you rolled a five, or no? You uh, sorry. What was your raw roll? Five. Five. So you're at eleven. Okay. Very good. And uh, Abasai, what did you uh, end up? Was your total eighteen? 18. Well, you know, for a roll you were kept cursing, that's still pretty good. Um, well, he wait. gave me a bonus. That's, you know, I was yeah. hoping to be astronomical. Yeah. Well, Alaro's got a 30. Alaro's got a 30. All right. And later? 28 off a natural 20. Wow. He's already parsed down this battle in every melee round of what's going to happen. He's already figured it out in his beautiful mind. And uh, I think that's probably true. All right. Very good. Well, so with all of your buffs and everything, um, you uh, are, uh, rem uh, remember that the escalation die is at three, an astounding three uh, to start you off. And, um let's go with the highest in initiative which at the moment is alaros what are you doing well um alaros is going to be using his quick action to declare a charge okay and with 
with his move action, he's going to move All right. over here to the Death Lord and right. the Shock Trooper, engaging both of them. Uh, then with as his... Do. Sorry? Is it as you do? Yeah. And then... Um, He is going to activate oh, actually I think all, all he can do right now is then take his attack action. So okay. with his charge, he's going to um, he's going to uh, hit the um, death captain with his heavy land. Okay. All right. So as, as it being a charge, he gets uh, 2d20. And then he gets to pick the, yeah. the higher of the two. Right. Okay. So. Let's hear what kind of uh, armor class you hit. So he's got a 16 and uh, his melee attack is plus 12. So he gets it's armor class 28. That is a hit. A death captain is currently armor class 25. All right. What? A drop in the bucket. So the heavy lance will hit him doing 7 die 10 plus 18 damage. So... Seven. Okay, so that is a total of 38 damage. 38. And he's going to do this as loudly as possible and try to attract all attention to himself. Okay. Got it. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, while well, you strike the uh, Death Captain with a mighty blow, um, uh, and yet he uh, he uh, seems um, only at the moment mildly annoyed that uh, that uh, that you are getting in his way, and. Uh, yeah, he turns the, the, the baleful gaze of his skull-shaped uh, helmet on you and uh, prepares to counter-strike with his uh, with his his own lance. Um, but he rolled really crummy on his uh, on his uh, initiative, so it's later's turn. It's a ranged spell, and we're going to be using the blinding truth of the goddess on the captain. Goodness. It's like you're ganging up on him. Um, I right. can't imagine. <laughs> so, Who the target... <laughs> I'm hoping the tar I'm hoping he has less than 230 hit points. Oh, uh, as you reach out and sense for his soul, he does... You said how many? 200 230. And... Oh, well, he didn't used to have less than that, but because he got hit hard, he does. <laughs> okay, so uh, now I need to roll against his mental defense. Okay, that is an 18. <laughs> okay, well, uh, how do I read now? No! Bollocks. Uh. That's a whopping 12, because oh, a whopping. 1. Oh. But I missed, yeah. and there's still a miss effect. There is a miss effect. Um, he needs a normal save to end being struck with fear. But if he fear. has an air room, if he has an air rune, it's a 16. I see. So he is under fear... Uh, 
which means here it's minus four. That's, um, did, yeah. And uh, and you can't use the escalation die, which I believe you can't do. Oh. So, yeah, Does the here, es escalation you, die add anything to my... Uh, it does add plus three to your attack. Oh, that wouldn't have been enough. But it's still not Because it would have, yeah. It only would have been, what, 15 at that point? Yeah. 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 Nope. Yep. Yep. Even, uh, apparently, your guidance program just was really off. Um, but, uh, yes, he is now, for the maybe the first time in a long time, feeling fear. Um, and uh, he will get to save against that at the end of his turn. Wow. That's a whammy on him, even even though you didn't get to do the full full vote of the uh, of the spell. Um, yes. All right. Uh, now we have. Uh, down here, and. So, uh, yes, this uh, woman on a ghostly horse um, uh, with uh, all sorts of bones and things uh, woven into her 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 braids, uh, her uh, the the uh, trapping trappings of her ghostly horse uh, contain uh, many severed heads and uh and hands and um and uh she uh rides down and uh unleashes a uh a deadly ray of uh of uh of death and let's see how well she does um uh she is not unleashing it on uh Alaros, but instead has come down uh, and uh, is essentially counter striking at um, at uh, later for having you know, dared to cast his spell uh, on the death captain. Let me let me see if this Excellent. is lame, lame or um, or uh, or impressive. Uh, so that is an attack against. Uh, uh, Physical defense PD of uh, 25. Yeah, my PD is a 20. Ah, okay. Um, so this is uh, negative energy damage. Um, and um, it, uh, it does 40 points of damage. And uh, you uh, you you start to feel some a, a creeping um, malaise in your um, in your uh, physical body. You have also had twenty ongoing points of poison damage. So this means at the beginning of your round, you will take twenty points of poison damage, and then you will get to save against it um, at the end of of your turn. Okay, then. All right. Writing myself a note. These things are going to get complicated for playing at seventh level, champion tier, and um, yeah, things just got real. All right. Um, that is all that she's going to do. So uh, let's move on to Abasai. So being an ardent follower of the red goddess, okay. you know I gotta break the rules. Oh yeah. Again. So as another one of my domains, uh -huh. red moon domain, enlightened interpretation of Rasharana, yeah. I'm going to change my summoning 
from right next to me to nearby. Okay. Yep. Which does that then include the invocation of Rufazel, Rufelza? Or is that a separate thing? That's a that's a separate thing. The um uh yeah, that's a that's Okay. Separate. Those are two different things that you get from from having gotcha. that domain. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to summon a red spirit. All right. And escalation die is three, so it's going to be a minor red madness spirit. Okay. Do you have a token for that? Because I'm going to summon it and put it right next to yeah. the heathen woman with the death heads. Yeah. And uh, and and lo and behold, that was one of the things that I I made a I made a boatload of tokens <laughs> and I didn't make one for that. So I'm just going to take a generic elemental token. I'm That's fine. A little, a little smaller because it's not a huge elemental. And I'm going to stick it over here. And uh, you said it was a minor red minor madness. red madness. All right. Because that's what you do when you are a lunar healer of Queen Dezola is you the first thing you do is summon a spirit to uh, to um, to it. Yep. Deal with your enemies. Yep. And right. it should be able to attack her. It should. Yes. Now I don't remember. Do they get the escalation die since I summoned it? Uh, to... Yes. Okay. It's going to attack for P. Uh -huh. Let us make this dice box bigger so I don't bump against it. <laughs> yeah. So it's that's almost too realistic. Yeah. Uh, 25 versus PD. Uh, 25 versus PD. Uh, that hits. She takes 32 psychic damage. Ow. And I have an aura of madness. Each enemy engaged with the madness spirit at the start of its turn is weakened as the tendrils of red moonlight pull at the vitality of those engaged. Mm. An enemy can shake off the weakened effect until the start of the next turn by spending a quick action and taking 1d6 psychic damage. But it won't happen until it's her turn. Yeah. Okay. So it. she can either choose to take the d6 or, um, or be weakened. Weakened is a state where you have negative four to your attack and defenses is that spirit in a position where it's engaging both of the tokens the witch and the uh shock trooper oh yeah excellent is that yeah yeah it's right there so it's all right based, based so, with both of them but it attacked her but yes good call right. yeah just checking yeah 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 you you all are experienced heroes and uh, and uh, warriors. You've been seen many battlefields and fought many foes. So uh, yeah. Um, wow. Okay. Anything else, Abasai? Um, no, that was his standard action. I can't. Well, I don't think yeah. I can. Yeah. I mean, you've. You sort of pulled two quick actions and a standard action, so. All right, let's move on. Hey, the death captain finally gets to go, as do the troopers, because they all rolled terribly on their uh, on their initiative. Although better, of course, than the penitent. Um, all right, so first, the captain. Let's see. He is scared. He is scared. Um, and you know, when you're scared and you're a horrible death captain, the first thing you do is lash out. Uh, so he is attacking your armor class. Uh, does a 25 hit you? No, sorry, a 21. <laughs> Probably not. Does a 21 hit you? Negative. I've All currently right. got 27 AC. Okay. And uh, what is your mental defense? My mental defense is 19. 19. Ah, well, you're the, 
it, the physical hit does not uh, does not harm you, but uh, he nonetheless places a horrible condition on you. You will take 50 ongoing negative energy damage. Um, so at the start of your next round, if some something doesn't take this condition off of you, you will take 50 points of damage, and then you will get that save at the end of that round. I, I actually, uh, my stasis room gives me plus one mental defense, so it's 20 if that makes a difference. Ah, uh, nope, he still, let, he, he still rolled enough to inflict that on you, I'm afraid. Okay. Welcome to the levels of not, of not playing around. Uh, all right. Um, so, and then one of his stooges also will take a poke at you. Um, yeah, he's just going to slash at you with his, with his, with his sword. Uh, that's going to miss. He waves his sword ineffectively at you, given your high level of armored protection. All right, moving along. Hmm. These folks are stuck with the wolves. All right, well. I think this guy has to uh, mm -hmm. chop at the elemental, or at the spirit, rather. So he's going to do that. Um, hey, everybody, he rolled a one. Hey, so in 13th age, when you roll a one, that's a fumble. Something inventively unpleasant happens. And if you roll a 20, that's a critical. And we'll come to that when we see one of those critical uh, hits uh, in the combat. So, um, of course, he is summarily uh, uh, dazed. Um, I'm already and, weakened. Or weakened, or uh, uh, whatever it is that uh, is, uh, yes, he's weakened. And, uh, and he rolled one. So... Um, uh, basically, two really unfortunate things happen to him. One, in swinging down at the uh, at the red spirit, uh, he just drops his sword, and he's he's so shocked by this that the that the ghostly steed under him just gets sucked back into his body, and so now he's just there on the ground with no sword and with no horse. Because um, he's having a bad day, you know, you should feel bad for him. Um, it's not too late for him to become a penitent. <laughs> uh, so uh, that guy's far away. So quick action. All right. Actually, going. Um, all right. Uh, these two, their ghostly steeds are are flailing their hooves at the wolves who are blocking their way here. Uh, but each of them uh, takes their uh, bow and decides to take a pot shot at y'all. Um, so one of them rolls a critical. The dice give, the dice take away. And of course, the target is Constog, <laughs> our, our scapegoat. Um, so critical typically is uh, double damage. Um, and uh, what we have here is just a, a straight up 40 points of damage as an arrow sinks deeply into you, Constog. Uh, the other guy taking a pot shot 
at uh, the healer because that's just the kind of people that they are uh only rolls a 19. i take it that does not overcome your armor class abasai no all right and finally Constag, now is your moment Oh, and there's not many things that Tunstog wants to do, but this is what he's doing first. He's and right on the back of the Mule of Shame, Seamus, yeah. following yes. after the example of Big Al and his clockwork ram. Yes. As Seamus approaches the Death Captain, I'm swinging my bolas in the air to ah. throw at the Death Captain in the hopes of hampering him, but All truthfully, right. I'm doing an abject lesson. Which is, ah. I will roll two d20s. Yep. I, punch dog, must take the worst of the two d20s, hopefully failing in glorious punch dog manner. The second of the two d20s will be saved, the higher, for one of my compatriots to use in battle when they roll worse than said d20. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I have moved you. Where Where exactly do you want to be in relation when you launch this perhaps foolish attack on the uh, Death Captain? Don't forget me. Ever he got off? Oh, he got off. All right. He leaps off of Seamus, the mule of shame. All right. Seamus is his own mule. Give us, it's true. <laughs> give us, give us your rolls. You're muted. Couldn't hear you, Tom Stark. You're muted. Yes, I was. All right, so, uh, sorry. Uh, my attack is an uh 19 and there is a die roll of 18 outstanding all right i am putting that on the board on the yellow on the yellow sticky next to the uh escalation uh and waning die uh, uh signifiers uh so that oh, 18 is up so technically my attack is a 22. all right uh that against the afraid but still very formidable death captain is, I'm afraid, a miss. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, but, that, but that 18 is up on the board for anybody, any, any of the other party members to use. Um, uh, it, is there any other foolish or humiliating thing that happens to Tonstag? Uh, as he misses the death captain. Um, yes. Uh, in He tried to do it all at once, and in, in climbing off of Seamus the donkey of shame, he has fallen down directly face first in the mud and, and is, is covered with a, a, a bit of, of crud now. Um, but uh, Tunch Dog is, has now taken damage, and yes. his suffering powers are activated. Indeed, they are. For you must suffer a lot. We, we now forgot to do something, Evan. Did we? Do? Did we? Yes. Um, did we as react? I summon the red spirit, there's a little trickle ah. of blood that comes out of my nose. Oh, uh, I take yeah. 46 damage. I don't know if you want to roll that and let me know what I take. Yes, I will. I would be happy to get. I would be happy to damage you. 14 points. Because the price we pay. That is a price for trafficking in spirits. Excellent. Anything else before we conclude the round? All right. Uh, we are up at the top of the order then. Uh, Alaros. Now, the first thing that happens, unfortunately, Alaros, uh, unless something else comes up, is that you take 50 points of damage. Ouch. <laughs> It's just a mere hundred. I could do this all day. Yeah, yeah. There you go. 
Okay. So, uh, and then I roll a save at the end to hopefully not take another 50. That's right. Next round. That's right. We'll, we'll, we'll conclude your, your, uh, your initiative with that, but tell, tell us what you want to do now. Um, I've, I've got a question about the um, that uh, the role that we made at the beginning of the session. I think yeah, maybe Jan's so going to answer. Yeah. So the rune rolls. This these are narrative tools that you have. Um, uh, essentially, they're not typically in combat unless it's very entertaining. Um, but uh, they are uh, allow you, like Mark did with the spirit rune. He he, he used it to. You know, get some inf otherworldly information. Uh, you might use it to counteract some uh, uh, lingering effect or uh, something that was going on, uh, something related to the rune that uh, is maybe a story obstacle or a story shortcut that you want to take that the that the rune might apply to uh, a a narrative piece, um, which normally doesn't come up in combat unless, as I said, it's entertaining. And it's a new okay. round, right, Evan? It is a new round. Oh, yes. And that means... Escalation goes to four. Is at four. For now. Oh, ah, ah. For now. Yeah. I, I didn't stock enough monsters that decrease the escalation time. Oh, did I say that out loud? Okay. Um, <laughs> Alaros. All right. <clears throat> um, upon wincing in pain as the uh, negative energies try to drain the beautiful light of the moon from my body Indeed. i will i will ask the uh the the red emperor to infuse me re-infuse me with that light and use the exceptional um hero questing gift of the moon to do the power return of the light which uh, is yes. a quick action daily I will roll right. a die 20. And then when any of myself or my allies get that roll, then uh, you're able to refresh a um, a daily, a recharge, or once per battle power. All right, let's find out what that is. And I will put that number on the board in an orange square. So, a seven. Seven? Correct. All right. During this battle, if anyone rolls a seven, you are empowered by the invocation of the moon here and are allowed to recharge a power or spell just as Alaros mentioned. So keep keep an eye out for rolling a seven. Lucky seven. All right. So, so that's your quick that action. That was a quick action. Then I'm going to do a free action. Okay. And I'm going to rally the troops to my side. By invoking rally to my side as a free action, all of your companions gain the following benefits based on the phase of the moon. Ah. Oh, Luckily, uh, I, 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 I don't want to discourage you necessarily from this, but I will say, you know, this is something that uh, is typically invoked when things look bleakest, when normally you might want to run away. Um, and, uh, and certainly you can, uh, you certainly can use this now, but, uh, things aren't looking that bleak for you and you only get to use it once unless somehow you you recharge it, which of course could happen. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm planning on rolling a seven, but, okay. uh, and, and I do understand that there is right. a stipulation now. Yeah, yeah. By invoking this, there's a stipulation. We must win or die there is yeah. no retreat yeah. either total victory or glorious death yeah. but wait there is more <laughs> um i have a i have a talent that improves this while the escalation dies for us um and it is <laughs> the, the, the damage resistance is plus 12 but actually because it's full moon it's plus 16 so that doesn't sound like a benefit uh, uh that is so sometimes part of that power is always on um and that's what improves with the um uh, uh with the 
with the feet. So you well, would normally you, have that. Well, no, normally, like, it's a, uh, everyone gets a plus 12 um, mm -hmm. damage resistance roll to either one source, three sources, or all damage. Yeah. And then because it's a full moon, it's a plus 16 to all damage. And yeah. then the escalation die being at plus four seems to not do anything, really. Well, so that, so, so there are two separate aspects of the power. One is invoking it, but one is just having it. So just having oh. it, you personally have that, uh, that uh, damage resistance. Um, and then and the invocation is where you give it to your companions. Gotcha. gotcha. Sounds like I might need to write some more clarifying language there. <sighs> this is why okay, we but... play these things. All right. Yeah. yeah. But this, so you're, there, you... there, there is more as well because since we have the full moon and I also have an adventurer feat that powers this up, we are all able to get a free recovery and gain double hit points back. Yep. So instead of me being negative 100 hit points, <laughs> I will, as a free action, and you said we weren't that bad off. Um, <laughs> It seems fine. <laughs> so I get a 78 recovery that gets doubled. Okay. So, so sounds like you're all the way back. So everybody who's wounded, go ahead and and, uh, and you can make a recovery roll, um, which the the base for that should be shown on your character sheet. You said for free, right? For free, you do not use a recovery. The beneficence of the goddess rains down upon you and infuses you, but also lets you know if you run away, you will die. If I recover, will I lose my suffering? Um, oh my God. Mm. Uh, it, yes. I, I'm not, yeah, 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 I'm good. <laughs> I like the supper. <sighs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, yeah. If you, forty-four. I, yeah, I, I don't think that I don't think that, I don't think that you can. I don't think that you can reject the goddess's gift here, though. I think you have oh, to. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to reject the goddess. Yeah. So, so uh, you still have to roll your recovery and see if you healed all of your hit points. But if you did, you might be having to stab yourself. To <laughs> Or, you know, take the gift of the goddess, and before you act, we'll have Seamus kick you before you do your thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Oloroso, are you done then? No, I have just begun. He's only begun. <laughs> throwing away a lot of power here. So that was uh, my my suffering has ended. Yeah, that's okay. It will start again soon. Don't worry. <laughs> Alros, tell us what else you're doing. Okay. So then, as um, <clears throat> my uh, my basic action or my standard action, I will be doing a once per battle uh, power called Battle Drill. Okay. And I am going to shout out, Fools, don't you understand? You could have fled, but now you will face the wrath of the moon goddess. And uh, I will begin to strike at the, uh, the death lord okay. until he falls from his saddle. And then okay. I will continue to strike over onto his minion. I... Okay. I get one attack and then I get a bonus five additional attacks. Yeah. And hope and yes, hopefully I roll a seven in this. Hopefully I roll a seven in this somewhere. All righty. Well, let's have the first roll. Um, I mean you do have to hit, uh, but um Yeah, I currently my attack bonus is um, plus 13. 
And don't forget the escalation die. Ooh, that's right. So uh, plus 70. Yeah. Okay, so the attack number one. The step. So 24. Uh, it's he a, has a 25 armor, but does the fear lower his armor? Uh, it, it does not. Um, oh, but remember that you can take the 18 that's on the board. Ooh, actually, I rolled a 7. I get to recharge. I will keep my well, 7. Well, let's see. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Oh, I have to hit, actually. Sorry. Yeah, actually, I have to hit to continue attacking. But you did roll a seven. It doesn't nope. it doesn't say you have to keep the seven. So I think the rich are getting richer today. So both the <clears throat> you, you hit lucky seven, but you're substituting in the 18, which I will remove from the board and use that as your first attack. So what is that total? 18 plus 17 is 35. Do do your damage to, uh, you know, everything is working the way it's supposed to. Um, so, yeah, you get your daily back. And how much damage do you do to the death captain? Um, okay. So that, um, I actually, I guess I assume that I have to use, I would be using my scimitar because I can't, I, I should probably be charging to use my lance. Uh, no, but you can. I mean, you you can you can use your lance um, from. Oh, uh, I can from mount. Yeah, as long as I'm mounted, I get to use the lance. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So that is. That is. Uh, sorry, it's taking so long, guys. Okay. Um, seven die ten. I think this might hurt. Oh, yeah. That so is, is it seven still active? Yes. Or is that, okay. For the whole battle. Okay. It doesn't get used up. So, so um, that is 62 damage to him. Ow. Okay. <clears throat> then, so he's. Uh, triggered his. Can, can I use uh, Can I use uh, powers in between these attacks? Uh, do I, I have? Do I have to do them all? You know, I think row? you just have to. I think now you are just you are just a a stabbing machine. <laughs> all right, we shall continue to stab away. Um, Nineteen. Is this are, are criticals just twenty, or do you have increased crit range? Uh, there, there are such things as increased crit, crit range, but I do not believe you have that active right now. So it, it's, uh, it's. I'll just, just have to. I'll just have to the old fashioned. That's right. That's All right. right. So a 34 plus 18 is uh, 52 more damage. All right. So this is to our trooper. No, oh, that's that's to him. Oh. That's, that's to the commander. Oh, I see. You're just going to hit hit him until he falls down. I, I, I I, I'm, I'm melting him down, and I, I uh, was trying to invoke some sort of fear in his minions as they watch me dismember him. Got it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Well, he's still up, but he looks worse right. than where. Attack number three. Yeah. Uh, nine plus 17 is 26. I think that hits. That does hit. That is a. Um, 48. Okay. Is he dead now? He is not. <laughs> All right. Well, I look over and smile at his buddy. 
He's next. You should have run. <laughs> Look, everyone. Alaros put the death in death, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> What did you roll for, for the next oh. next drink? Yeah, that I, I hit him. So then he took uh, that's a horrible dial. Um, <laughs> I keep forgetting my uh, base damage here. Okay, plus eighteen. So he took forty-seven. Forty-seven. That, that's my my fourth attack. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean. I mean, you you have stabbed him repeatedly with your lance, um, and uh, and he is full of holes, but he's not down yet. This is the the minion you're saying, right? Oh no, uh, uh, no, the death the death captain. Oh, I thought you said he was dead. No, no, no. I'm afraid I said he was not dead. Oh, all right. Well, and he's he is still not dead, but. Uh, He's closer. It looks like, but he's not okay. looking so great. Is he staggered? Yeah, all, yeah, he all is staggered. Are, yeah, all of these attacks are going towards him. So yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about the thing. Yeah. Um. So the the damage for that. That's a better roll. So that's uh, sixty-one. Sixty-one. Okay. Now he's gone. <laughs> okay. So that's the fifth so, attack, and then um, I get attack. So one last attack on his on his buddy. Yep. And um, yeah, he's not looking real real happy about being engaged with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, my um a uh, 26 just wait till the honeymoon <laughs> and uh, 26 is 50, it yeah 58 damage 58 damage <laughs> ow um okay well he's not dead but he is staggered uh which means that he is he is at or below half hit points um, um so that's also that's six six attacks so uh with battle drill um Alaros gets six temporary hit points so he's got okay. plus 36 temporary hit points okay and okay. um then I'll, as we'll try to fix that <laughs> yeah as a um um, as a quick action, um, he's going to try to spur his mount on the, uh, the mechanical bull to do a uh, a nasty attack. Okay. So that is a the mount's natural weapon at plus six versus AC. Okay. Um, with the escalate, uh, escalation dice, he's got plus 10. Okay. Does the ongoing effect the captain's death? No. It does not. Bummer. Um, the, um, oh, the, me the mechanical uh, ram also gives me 18 temporary hit points. So okay. that would have gotten taken care of with a negative damage yeah so i'm gonna add another 18 back to him but um he hits him and does uh 48 damage 48 with the uh, yeah All the, right. the yeah. nasty attack is 48 that that is that was nasty so the mechanical ram uh does indeed uh, live up to its name ramming that guy into oblivion um all right uh i think I, it's time I, to use oh go ahead yeah I'm, i i would be finished i but i actually have to make a ride test to be able to do that so let me okay. let me roll that well maybe 
you won't make it. No, you would not. I, I succeed. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. You're a seventh yeah. level heroic, heroic individual. All right. Um, so now, so now you make your save. save. Yeah. Yeah. You need to make. You, you need to roll eleven or above straight on a d20. No. No. All right. I fail with the six. All right. Uh, so, so, so the, the curse, the curse lingers on you. Um, very good. Well, we'll address that next round. Uh, so later, first of all, you take 20 points of poison damage. What would you like to do now? Yeah, that puts me exactly back where I was. So, uh, so we have a move, a quick, and a re and a standard action. That's right. Question about spells: Are you limited to a spell a round? No. If you have a quick action spell and a full action spell, you can cast both. So I may have some awesomeness coming this way. All right. Um, <laughs> beware the brown how, sage. <laughs> that sounds, sounds bad for my guys. Um, um right. is is the uh, is the spell slinger that acolyte? Is she in range for me to close with her to uh, she's close quarters? Yeah, yes. she's nearby, so you can just move up to be absolutely to okay. to a close range. Uh, uh, so what is close quarters then? Um, um, oh, that's like melee. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Spur the steed. yes. Spur the steed on. Get right up in her face. Okay. Um, Truth or Rasha Rana. Whoa. Close quarters spell. Okay. Uh, quick action to cast. Okay. Uh, Let's if, see. For the rest of the battle, all if enemies. If you move gear. over here, you're opposite the elemental. Which does what? Does that give the elemental advantage or something? I don't remember. It's a problem um, when you play multiple games in a week with yeah. different <laughs> systems. Uh, it, like... it, 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 it doesn't. Okay. okay. Um, then I'm just going to go with straightest, uh, most direct route. Um uh, for the rest of the battle, all enemies near me with 345 hit points or less uh, take a penalty to their mental defense equal to their wisdom mo equal to your wisdom my modifier, wisdom modifier, which is which is a b blessed 11. Uh, well, let's see. We got to take the um, it's just the wisdom now plus the uh, but so it's minus four. All right. Oh, um, dude. no, that's great because my next spell is going to target their MD. All right. So okay. Well, it's that's, minus four. That's yeah, fine. That's that's yeah. Okay. Right. Um. Let's see. Whenever one of those enemies misses with an attack roll, takes fourteen moon. That's wow. fine. Uh, and I have a MD attack coming up here, which is where did I put it? That is sort of the way it was designed. Boy, why did I do that? Um, uh, where did I put it? Where did it go? Piercing arrows of revelation. Uh oh. Yep. Um, and since it's a full moon. Uh, even if I cast it for broad effect, it casts as for power. It does. So I'm hitting up to three nearby enemies yep. for whatever they are. Yep. Um, and I'm asking, where's the box? All right. Very good. Well, let's see. Do you have to roll for any of these things? I do. It's going to be a uh, okay. first there uh, MD. Okay. So let's bring up the die. All right. 
That's going to be a 25 versus her MD. Yeah, that's going to hit. Uh, 9 die 10 plus 8 psychic. Okay. And 15 ongoing moon. Ooh. So give me a second here. Let's... Uh, how do I? Nope, that's not it. Uh, and then now that we have them all there, we'll roll it. Of course, the the ro actual roll is less than the dies when I pull them out. Uh, Forty-eight plus eight, fifty-six psychic damage. Ow. And fifteen ongoing moon. Um. With my question, if she's not dropped to zero, she's going to be compelled to give a truthful answer. Um, are there any other of their mooks within the area? Oh, yeah. You said nearby? Yeah. You yeah. Can, yeah. I mean, uh, this guy, of course, this guy over here, this guy over here. I mean, if you wanted to shoot Alros or Tonstag, you get them too. Um, no. Nah. Um, yeah. Okay, Basically. so I will zot the other two bad guys. Okay. okay. Um, I will, let's see here, we'll clear out that. Uh, mook number one is a 24 MD. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, Truth of Russia, Rana. It's going to be... It says it's a close quarters spell. I don't know what they mean when all enemies near you. Yeah. Is that close quarters limitation distance? Uh, so close I would quarters, imagine so. Uh, so a close quarters means that you can cast it when you're engaged. It doesn't draw like an opportunity attack. Oh. Um, and the uh, near all all enemies near you. That means everybody who's defined in the nearby. Uh, uh, zone. Okay. Uh, I know I'm being no, no, specific about that. Uh, 24 MD on the first guy and a whopping 16 MD on the other. Uh, both will hit. Then we're going to roll for that first. 59 psychic. Uh, 59 psychic. Uh, okay. Uh, Third guy is going to be a uh, 74 psychic. Wow. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, you are, uh, you're doing some harm. They're both staggered. Um, if, yeah, if none of them were at zero and they're still up, uh, it's the same question for all of them. So, um, all right. I think, and uh, yeah, yeah uh, that's going to be the extent of anything I've got. Okay. In blind unison, they say, you'll have to be more specific about which <laughs> parts. Uh, no. So, okay. Well, it's going to be the box that is not opened with pain, nor does it actually have a head. All right. Um, so, right. targets, free question. Yes. Okay. So, um, so, uh, the, the, the two MOOCs that you hit essentially say some variation of what box and, and the, uh, but the, the acolyte says, uh, we're looking for it in the wreckage. 
I'm which means they don't have, they have it. Don't have it yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, that's the extent of my round. Oh, okay. I need to save on poison, don't I? You yep. do. I do, and that's a die twenty. I need eleven. Yes. Or not. No, no save. Uh, yeah. do I have a mod on that? Do I have a mod to the die roll? Uh, is it like a con? Wouldn't. There are some. There are some uh, special bonuses, okay. but I don't think you have any active. So. Okay. Uh, so that would be considered what we call a normal save. An easy save yeah. is six plus, and a hard save yeah. is sixteen plus. So. It, yep. Unless you have something special that gives you save bonuses, it's kind of just a general. Okay. I didn't know if con. I didn't know if con added to save numbers or anything. But okay. Does the escalation die apply to save rolls as well? It does not. Okay. Unless some special power fiddles with it. But no, uh, that's okay. I don't mind taking another twenty round. 20 it's next just round. For, just for punching people. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> the Acolyte, who's been zapped, first thing she does is take 15 points of moon damage because, ow. Um, remember, she's weakened. Yes, I remember she's weakened. And uh, she'll have to try and save against that at the end of her round. But um, no, right she's now, just. Oh, or she's it's just a quick damage. action to shake it off, but you would take 76 oh, psychic right. damage, or she that's just right. is continually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 76. That's right. I and I wrote that, too. But you guys try writing 400 pages of, uh, of uh, text, remembering them all. Okay. Um, uh, excellent. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, she's questioning having got up in the morning um but uh nonetheless she is again it's, it's not too late for her to become a penitent <laughs> I, you know that's that's a fair offer but um Tost I can show her she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna take a whack at uh Uh, later now uh you all have so the the resistance that they have uh to all damage it's the uh, it's the uh, 16 plus is that right Alaros? correct okay so uh she did not she did not roll more than a 16 so she's gonna have to have the damage that she does um if she hits if she hits um so we're going to see whether or not she does hit uh, which uh, does a 20 versus armor class hit you um, later? Probably not. Uh, it does not. Okay. However, I have retribution. Okay. Of course you do. Right. <laughs> uh, I can make a basic attack against the attacker. Uh, yeah, but okay. So. Okay. Are you Where's going my... to exercise? I will. Or... I will use it. Yes. Okay, because something is going to happen to you, even with the miss. But you can go uh, ahead and take your retribution first. I will do that. Of course not. Uh. uh thirteen. Does she have a thirteen or less AC? <laughs> uh, she does not. Even with the uh, all of the oh, and the escalation minuses. seventeen. 17 still a miss ah okay fine sally okay oh, so um she is unable to land a solid blow on you nonetheless she still uses the force of whatever is imb imbued into her uh the rod in her hand and and throws you gently but nonetheless transports you over there away from your horse over where oh wow okay if you um, uh, are using a mouse you can scroll in and make the map bigger i found yeah. it i found me yeah or smaller or yeah you scroll in and out okay Dope. 
Well, um, so. Uh, what well, she uh, doesn't know is that actually makes me more dangerous. And who are these icons over here in the red misty area? Uh, well, so you've just noticed that these two uh, individuals have have uh, sort of emerged to see what's going on. Um, they appear to be dressed in lunar uniforms, uh, imperial uniforms. Okay. Um, Targeting scope off. <laughs> very, very fair. Very fair. Uh, okay. And Abasai, it is in fact. Uh, uh, oh wait, no. The uh, acolyte needs to uh, try to avoid the ongoing moon damage. So I got to roll one more thing for. Her. She also cannot roll a save to save her life, so she will continue to take the ongoing damage. Um, all right, Abasai. Now it's your turn. What would you like to do? Okay. Um, so the first thing just so I can scroll in a little bit easier. Yeah. See everything. Doesn't yeah. change effect. Madness of Celine. Uh oh. I need to roll how many hit points I affect. Okay. Let's hear it. And it's a full moon, so it's gonna be a plus plus one hundred. Yeah. I wrote that too. You guys would be feeling a lot more fear if it was the black moon, but no. Is a full moon supposed to be this over the top? Uh, yes. Okay. I did it rule by eight to a 20. Okay. So 172 hit points. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. gonna, that's gonna get it. How many? And then yeah, right. now I have to roll my attack. Yeah. Against their MD, which they've all got a penalty on. Which they all have a penalty on. So 24, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that's going to affect everybody. Okay. So 24 versus MD. Yeah. If I hit, well, you have to start with. Uh, the yeah. one with the least amount of hit points. That's right. Okay, so um, that is going to be uh, this guy over here. Hi. Uh, I'll and, use the laser pointer. Mm, that gentleman. Okay, he's helpless. Save ends 16 plus. Okay. Or if he takes 10 points of damage. So if you damage okay. him, he'll come out of his helpless state. And then be the next person until I run out of hit points. He, he, yeah, he, sl he slumps. So let's see, what's your, I'm sorry, that was 170 something, 76 hit points uh, was your total? I think so. Something like okay. that, or 172 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe 72. Okay. In any case, um, all right. Uh, you still have a pool of 158 points to spend. Uh, so is it? It goes to the next. The next guy, that's this guy um and uh that's uh um oh let's see now uh oh, i guess dead yeah okay right um so then let's see is it so then it's then it's her and uh let me do so so far three of the four targets are helpless so far um okay. All right, and the last one has not been damaged, and so your your effect does not uh, take place. He has more than seventy hit points, which was That's this, this, this guy right here. What you had left, yes. Okay. Uh, but everybody else, you know, just falls off. Horse disappears. He falls off. Horse disappears. Um. Yeah, and they're helpless. I will also cast as a quick action, 
blessing of Sedenia. Okay. And because it's full moon, it's automatically cast for power. Okay. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, um, because I hit an enemy, I will yeah. use my gift of Beepot's Liberation. Yes. And Alaros can make a save, uh, save for effect as a free action. Okay. Right now. Alaros, see if you can avoid taking that negative energy damage. Yes, please. 20. All right. Okay. So go. then, very much. I'm going to catch my Blessing of Sedenia. Okay. Quick action, broad effect. Um, three nearby creatures. I can include myself, but I'm not. I'm going to include my three compatriots. Okay. You get plus two to attack until the end of the battle. And you okay. each get 4d10 temporary hit points. All right. Sorry. Super, super buff. Tonstyle, you have to do it the hard way with no powers. <laughs> yes. Uh, do um, do uh, temporary hit points stack? Uh, normally, they don't. So just take whatever's highest? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can roll it and take the higher number of what you've got left or or not. So we're it rolling our own of the temporary. Few. Yeah, you roll 40 10. That's a temporary pool that will come away before you're normal. That's one of the few. No, you can't do this in 13th age rules. They don't stack them. But you can yeah. take the greater amount. Yeah. Except there are, of course, a couple of powers that say you can stack. These, that, that those can. But that's not one of these. That this, let me say that again. This is not that power. All right. Yes. It's a good power, though. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. I am running out of dailies, though. <laughs> well, you know, you got to roll a seven. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's the death captains. Oh, he's dead. Uh, there's one trooper still up, being menaced by wolves. Um, you know, there was oh. another one, but he ran off the board. Um, my, my elemental gets to go. Your elemental does get to go. Should have gone first, even, maybe. Oh. Um, so that that's okay. No, you can choose... However, uh, I think technically the rules say that it goes after you, but you can play around with the order. In any case, your elemental goes. What is your elemental going to do? Where's He's going to run over and smack this guy who's not helpless because oh. the other ones will stand there. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, they're they're on the ground and, you know. Yeah. Go right ahead. Bring it. Um, 26 versus PD. Uh, oh yeah. 32 psychic damage. 32 psychic damage. All right. I could just uh, get a higher, and he's in the aura of madness. Yeah. But I'm going to have to. Then... So he'll be or... weakened. He's weakened. All right. The Acolyte isn't weakened anymore. She's not in the aura, but she's helpless. Helpless. <laughs> Tactics are our friend. Is worse. Um, okay, so yes, weakened and uh, took 32 points of damage. He's still up. And so now it's initiative 16, and it's his round. And um, uh, the uh, the individual will the troop the uh, the trooper will see what he can do about maybe disposing of that spirit and you know keeping his options open um that's unlikely to be very effective but uh, what's the armor class on the spirit sorry 21 yeah, he misses. Swish. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh. all right. Uh, he is going to try and uh, flee, and uh, the 
the uh, spirit and the three wolves that are left will, can all take opportunity attacks. Twenty-three. Twenty-three is going to hit. He takes another thirty-two psychic damage. Ow. Uh, however, he is not—he is not dead. So the, the wolf hit him with sharp they, fangs. They—they—they they, they rolled just as well as I've been rolling all along. So um, no, badly. Uh, so he flees off the board. Um, and uh, we'll pick oh. him up later if necessary. Campaign loss. <laughs> That's right. King of War campaign loss. For some reason, you uh, put the ghost horse over by me. Oh, did I? I uh, my apologies. I was trying to That's okay. put it, trying to put it in the trash, but I missed. Um, Are you saying okay. I'm trash? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to go there. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So. The shock, um, there's a shock trooper on the boat. Is he unconscious? Uh, oh, sorry. He didn't make it all the way to the trash. All right. Um, so basically you have uh, uh, three helpless um, uh, individuals, let's see, at the start of the next round where the escalation die goes five although actually you know the um all of the energy of this fight has sort of dissipated away because you totally owned these uh folks from the kingdom of war and uh, didn't really have you know that much trouble with them um so what would you all like to do combat if over, or does tunstog still get the go oh sorry <laughs> i no it's my fault no, no, it's not. <laughs> that's, that's right. it, is your, it is your fault. It really is. Not, it, really it, is, it, is your, it is your turn. It so, is your turn before we go to, uh, sorry, Escalation 5. We go to Escalation 4. Um, so, that was so good you get a, a possibility, Ben. Dam's <laughs> uh, uh, watching. We'll just sit, stockpile them. Um, so what I'm looking for is a, an enemy who is both staggered and engaged with uh, one of my compatriots. You know, unfortunately, well, nobody's like that because the three that are left are um, are uh, are helpless. That's right. They're just their their minds wandering on the ground uh, as their bodies lie on the ground. So. Um, all right. Well, well then, uh, I uh, so first of all, I I did heal up completely. Yeah. But as a penitent, having made a miss on the last round, yeah. I take one point of damage uh, at the beginning of each round. Uh, it was my ranged attack causes that the miss. So I am uh, uh, <laughs> I, I have taken damage. So my suffering yeah. does begin, uh, and I am going to use my sneak attack power or my suffering power uh yeah. to sneak attack one of the helpless people and i'm going to uh use my prison shiv and i'm going to shove it in their ear okay uh which one do you want to do that to there's two troopers and <laughs> acolyte. 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 <laughs> oh oh definitely don't, the don't, acolyte. um and as don't i do want it to don't we want to question the acolyte? That would be the most. Good. Good. So that, that would be, be my preference. To command. Who to I, kill? I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm not going to finish her off. Maybe, but yeah. it's not. It's really not his kind of thing. But yeah. what do you guys think, acolyte or was one of the troopers? Kill, kill the trooper. The, the war leader demands that you kill the trooper. Trooper. Trooper heard lead. You got it. Um, all right. So uh, that will be a. I'm going to. Oops. Oh, I'm going to grab, grab him and take you on down. 
So, uh, what'd you roll? That is, that is only going to be an 18. Well, that's still going to hit because they are helpless. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll your damage. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get the... um, well, so it is my standard damage, which is seven. Six. Uh, well, so you're shipping him, right? To right. I think it's seventy-four. Before, excellent. That's right. Plus your add. Uh, plus, so that's a twelve. Uh, seventy-four is. Wow. All right. Go ahead. Plus three d six. Ah, yeah. Which is another twelve. So twenty-four. Plus whatever the, I think isn't there a damage add? Uh, standard. Let's see. Yep, 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 yep. My shiv is plus twelve, so that makes it thirty-six. Thirty-six. He die. <laughs> the, the chat is loving this. Uh, if you <laughs> can't see it, it's uh, who had Tonstog in the ruins with the shiv. <laughs> And um, as he does it, he yeah. looks back to his uh, uh, party and says, look, I'm helping. <laughs> <sighs> Duly noted. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now it's the next round. Um, and uh, uh, you, you all can either, you know, uh, continue to you know treat this as combat and and uh, you know make attacks versus the helpless individuals on the ground, or move out of combat and you know trust them up or do whatever you know just uh, you know you tell me what I, I've I've got a question for you absolutely um, you you, you the, go first yeah the the healers have uh, powers that uh, give uh, free recoveries. If the escalation dies at a certain level, does if we were to end combat right now, would that prevent them from being able to heal us for free after combat? Hmm. Sure. Uh, let me see if I got something that gives you a free. I do have healing. I'm just trying to see here which. Uh... I think later later was saying that if like he's going to burn up a bunch of recoveries using his healing if it uh, if the escalation dies in at least two. Well, a lot of my powers it costs me recoveries to cast them if the escalation isn't at one plus. So the fact that we started at two, I can cast my spells without not losing my recoveries. Yeah. Oh, okay. But your powers aren't healing. No, I have healing powers. I'm just seeing if any of them give you free. I have some that just trigger. Oh yeah, full moon ballads. Uh, my touch of Dizola, I can give you a free recovery, but it, it's yeah. If it's like a daily, don't do it. No, I get twice per battle. Well, then so you on my turn, I can, I can trigger that. Okay. So it sounds like yeah. And I get a bonus because of my healing domain. Mm -hmm. If I got it right, you've got you get plus fourteen because it's twice my level. Yeah. So, but, but that's that doesn't. I can give you a bonus. But that doesn't. Um, I think that bonus is on all the time. It's under the healing domain, which comes under the once per day I can domain invocation. Well, yeah, but the so the invocation is one separate ability under the domain, and then there's a a more static power, and the, I think the static power, I think that is. Um, oh yeah, yeah. When you cast a healing spell, yeah. an ally healing is recovery to target as additional. Yeah, so you're going to get plus fourteen on that free recovery. Yeah, um, but that doesn't require you to actually. It, it, it doesn't require a particular escalation. Yeah, that, that was, I was mentioning that because um, yeah. uh, later was, was mentioning 
that yeah. his he burns recoveries unless that's we right. have escalation. That's right. That's right. That's right. Different, different, different context though. But uh, yeah. yeah, so that's um, it must be it. It. yeah. So but, um, uh, so Abias, Alex, his, yeah, Abias's powers are uh, uh, twice per battle, so we would have to finish using them in the battle, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, if you want to uh, use your action to tie them up, when it gets to me, I'll yeah, quick action and let you yeah. heal. Yeah, uh, Alros is going to go over to the uh, uh, acolyte and bind her and gag her. Okay, very good. That'll make it easier to interrogate her. Um, okay, uh, so Alros, uh, you know, rides his uh, his mechanical ram over, jumps off, starts tying up the acolyte. Uh, uh, later. Um, uh, you take 20 poison damage. Stupid mute. What, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess I'm going to have to try and save on that. Okay. Uh, on At the end of your turn. Damage. Man. Well, okay. So I'll take that. Um, and... Did we see other people? What the the other people in the reds that had like the lunar uniforms? Yes, these guys so over they, here are lunars. Have, yeah, they have uh, emerged out. They they are not looking in good shape. Okay. They sort of. I guess they're survivors. Yeah. That, um, that, that seems like a good guess. Or sacrifices. <laughs> uh, column A, column B. Uh, I guess I'm going to go over to them mm -hmm. and uh, start pumping them for information. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, the Lunar Marine, uh, he uh, he has lost an arm, and he's you know tourniqueted it off. Um, and uh, he has a, he's sort of uh, keeping himself up uh, uh, with the grasping a, a spear, but, you know, he looked like he was ready, you know, if he needed to uh, use that last adrenaline pump to, to, uh, to, to fend off anyone who was trying to get into the, uh, the wreckage, uh, he was ready to do that. But uh, as you approach him, he's sort of collapsing down. He sees the symbols of your uh, of your uh, rank and order on it, and you know, he's like, he knows that you are from the from the lunar territories, um, and uh, but uh, he's sort of falling falling deliriously to the uh, to the ground uh, as you approach. Uh, the other individual, the um, the the crew member, uh, is also he's. Um, he looks like he's got uh, his uh, ribs crushed and uh, and uh, in 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 pretty bad shape, but he's been uh, uh, sort of dragged himself into a, a crouching position over by this box, this white square here, um, where uh, he's uh, but he's letting his uh, scimitar scimitar's uh, uh, point drop as he sees someone uh, enter the, the wreckage who uh, is is clearly not hostile, but instead, uh, although strangely a Mastali, a Mastali dressed in the uh, the garb of, of a friend. Well, hello. It is nice to see that you have survived <laughs> for some value of survival. We do have a healer over that way. Although I would suggest you probably make yourselves comfortable here and we will bring him over to you. Thank you for securing the box so that we do not need to be looking for it now. Uh, uh, no, no. And as you look over at the box, you see that it's ruptured. That like the special team took it. And, uh, I'll I'll come back to you on that. Um, 
Uh, uh, later, the acolyte is unconscious uh, and now tied up. Um, and Abasai, what would you like to do? Um, oh, does um, anyone roll your save later, please? Oh yes. Not later, but now. Well, I will make that save now. Thank you. Maybe. Okay. Yes. Fifteen. Excellent. All right. No longer taking ongoing poison damage. Great. Uh, okay. So we have a marine. Mm -hmm. here that's hurt with yeah. a bad arm yeah how bad is this one has some broken ribs but not that damaged uh no he looks he looks like on the edge of death as well like all sorts of blunt force trauma all over him but the most notably uh you know the chest you know it's like it's amazing that he's even even conscious Do they count as allies for battle healing? Uh, yes, but but they are so poorly damaged. I mean, battle healing is mostly for player characters, shall we say? Um, but uh, yeah, they're in they're in bad shape. They're in bad shape, but could certainly be made comfortable. Well, I have healing that I can try to. Recover them. Yep. Does he look important? Like I need to do Dezola's sacrifice to? No. <laughs> they don't look that important. <laughs> With Dezola's that... sacrifice, I can take on the wounds. But being a full moon, I only take half that damage. That's true. But if they're not that important, then I will just. Do I also see the box now that I'm in the wreckage? You do. You do. Um, and, uh, that the, uh, the box, um, you can see that, the, that these enormous, what looked like ballista bolts went through the, um, through the hull of the, uh, uh, the moon boat at, at various points. Uh, but one of them pierced the hull and pierced the box. Um, so is this box like this or chest or is it a box? Yeah. It's, um, it's, uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, the, uh, a, uh, a case that you would have a long gun in that you would check through, um, you know, at an airport, um, uh, but of course, made out of uh, uh, like it can hold the staff. Of, yes, uh, out of a a, uh, a variety of uh, woods, and you can see that it had layers of lining inside of it that have has been slightly broken open, but uh, uh, of different materials. Where is the gift? Uh, so the. Um, the crew member uh, sucking, uh, laboring in breath says, uh, we had a special squad to protect it, but something happened when that got broken open, I think. They, they're from the Vampire Legion uh, and they took it. And they took, everybody was still whole, and they, they took them. What do I know about this Vampire Legion? Oh, well, um, uh, what, uh, what uh, background might help you know about, uh, uh, about uh, things about the Lunar Empire? Oh, being an advisor to the king, you yeah. have to know the political comings and goings and elite units. Yeah. Why don't you give me a role for that? Yeah. I also have i uh, I'm a tribune of the college of many arts. Does yeah. that help? Uh, yes. And, uh, I, you know, I'll say you, you definitely heard this gasped out. Wisdom. 
Yes. Uh, wow. Make a wisdom roll. Researcher? Yeah, researcher. Uh, researcher for an intelligence roll, I'd say. Ah, uh, that works. All right. For, for background for uh, background roles, do you add your level to them? Yes. So, um, and then it, do you also use, is there anything else added or is it just your skill and the, uh, the level? Uh, skill level and then the, the, um, the characteristic bonus. It so, should, on your character sheet, it should have a column or a, a row with the totals of your bonus and level, and then you just have to take your background and add it to it. Yeah. Yeah. So for okay. later and, and um, Alaros, uh, use intelligence. I got a 24. Okay. I have a whopping 18. Say vampire? 18. And uh, Alaros? All right, sorry. Uh, Abasai? 17. I yeah. Hose the roll. Hose the roll. Okay. That's what I get for hanging around with a penitent. There you go. Did anybody. It's my fault. Did, did anybody. It is. <laughs> you, did go it, tie somebody up. <laughs> did, uh, did, did, did anybody roll a seven? Just, in, you know, since that's No, I game. rolled a two. Uh, two. All right. Okay. So, um, Okay, so for the seventeen and the eighteen, you you, you know that the uh, the empire. Alros got Alros got twenty four. Yeah, I, I, I'll get to you. I'm I'm given that I'm giving out the low level information, and then the the, the premium Sorry. stuff I'll hand out and attribute to your deep knowledge of uh, the uh, the military structure of the empire. Um, so you know that the basically rumors that uh, that the uh, empire. Uh, has a legion of vampires uh, that they use and deploy in in special missions and that they they have from time to time detached of course vampirism is a chaotic uh uh you know forbidden magic but of course the the goddess accepts all and for those who have sworn oaths to the um to uh to uh, to the goddess, then uh, they are accepted for service. Now, vampires in Glorantha, um, uh, they are similar in many ways to you know the vampires we encounter in all sorts of fantasy fiction, but um, they are robbed of many of their powers in the daylight. But they don't burst into fire, nor do they sparkle um, in uh, in daylight. And um, uh, but in the dark. Uh, of course, they thrive. They are extremely strong. They uh, have uh, different powers to perhaps compel people. They can turn into animals or or into mist, or at least that's uh, things that you've heard. Now, Alaros, you in fact know that that the Vampire Legion is not a myth. Uh, it, it's not just a rumor. There is a an entire legion of vampires that have been recruited uh, for the defense of the um, uh, empire. Um, it is modeled on, uh, on uh, military structures of, uh, of a uh, long ago um, uh, kingdom of vampires that uh, existed in uh, uh, closer to the part of the world that you're actually from, um, uh, but that were um, uh, faced and de destroyed uh, ages ago. Um, but uh, those secrets seem to have been rediscovered by the Empire, and um, and uh, it is not unknown that that uh, that uh, detachments from the Legion will be sent uh, as high-level, you know, surprising and powerful guards um, uh, or um, uh, or uh, couriers or 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 assassins. Um, and, uh, you know, only something extremely important and probably dangerous would be accompanied by a, a detachment of, uh, from the Vampire Legion. And these, these vampires have sworn oaths to serve the Red Emperor, correct? They have. 
Okay. So that that information shared with the rest of them. It's it's not a myth. They yeah. so, they do exist. So is that good? The boxes uh, uh, contents are saved, or should we be concerned because they shouldn't have taken it? Yeah, they shouldn't have taken it. That that uh, that uh, you know they should have been here to defend it, um, even in their weakened state here in the daytime. Um, uh, but the the fact that the the box was broken open and then for some reason they removed its contents and have departed that's bad. So I asked these guys what was in the box since they were there when the vampires took it. Uh, we didn't see. We we were we were up, up on up on. Well, I mean we were picking ourselves out of the the wreckage. We we. Uh, we saw the. I saw that the box was open, and they, they, they took the. They had something. It it was radiating a darkness around them, and uh, and uh, they they drew the survivors in, and and they changed them somehow. So the item had darkness and changed the vampires, or other crew members the other crew members the vampires did it and why didn't you stop them uh he points to his crushed chest uh, and uh and you know his so you offer with his severed arm these you must have a these, talk no, with on how the, things the, are done the captain was dead and None of the vampires were were destroyed in the crash. We we must make these two comfortable. They are loyal servants of our empire. It it was not within their power to resist a detachment of the Vampire Legion. They would be mere snacks to them. Uh, Evan. Yes. Is it? possible to use the truth rune as a narrative thing to find the path the vampires took absolutely then that is what we're looking for okay um and uh, the the truth rune will 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 guide you forward is there anything else you want to do in this area other than we'll we'll, we'll assume you're able to make the uh the the crew they're not really up for for any kind of hard travel or pursuit, um, uh, but uh, you know you can either leave uh, captive or um, or uh, or dispose of the uh, Kingdom of War individuals. Um, well, I think we want to question them. I think that was uh, Alarosa's idea too. Is to yeah. question the acolyte on why they were coming for this? Was this a can chance encounter, or are they searching for something? And what do they know? Like. Do they know what was in the box and that's what they wanted it? Sure. Okay. Yeah, but... You had to do that just like so you said. All right. So well, I know we've been playing a long time. We are going to get to the conclusion of this. Um, let's uh, move to um, – we are definitely out of combat now. Your elemental disappears. Anybody's lingering conditions disappear. Um, uh, of course, the damage remains, and uh, we can uh, – can, you can um, – Yes. Let's assume the a quick rest. So, uh, if you want to uh, take one or more recoveries uh, to uh, to uh, take care of damage, you can do that. Um, otherwise, you um, you have your uh, your two uh, captives trussed up. Uh, you've uh, made the um, the marine and the crewman uh, comfortable and uh, sheltered them in. Uh, in the area here, uh, the acolyte is, you know, wild-eyed and uh, and uh, looking at you with uh, with uh, a, a penetrating stare of hatred as you uh, as you uh, uh, prepare to talk to her. Um, and of course, uh, uh, later is like I can see where they went. 
Oh. So, uh, who is who is who is talking to the acolyte? Well, our best talkers will be doing that while I make sure she does not try anything fishy. Okay. That's fair. Talkers? Yeah, if she tries to if she tries to cast a spell or something, you know, I could snap her neck. I believe that Abasai is probably the appropriate person to speak to the Akadai. I mean, yeah. I'm a good talker, but uh, the status levels are not commiserate. <laughs> I don't mind talking to her, but I would like to confer with later since he is more knowledgeable about the Kingdom of War. Um, about like a tactic, like what she would know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm going to lean back on my researcher if that actually, if it, if you need a rule for it or a roll for it or okay. something. Sure. Um, well, let's start with the questioning. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, what do we want? I mean, I guess we want to know. And. Like, was this a targeted attack? Did you know it was in the box? That Because she had to answer you truthfully about on that one spell you had that she was still looking for it. So I would ask, why are you looking for it? Did you know what was in it? Are there other teams looking for it? And I don't know. I don't have any kind of knowledge of the Kingdom of War besides it's out there and it's not. not they're not friends. Yeah. I mean... They just want to embrace you all. How yeah. did you know that this vehicle would be coming in this path in order to ambush it like you did? Yes. I will try that and I will. Do you want to roll for that or just give um, a question? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And, well, no, I mean, we'll role play through if there's okay. something difficult. Uh, cool. My mistress, Orsad, the Lord of Death, he sent us here. We shot it from the sky. It broke, and its prize, its prize was nearly in our grasp. How did you know it was here? How did your master know it was here? The master sees many things. The mistress knows many dark secrets. The spirits whisper to her. You soon will all die. You will be slaves. You will be be ground to dust. Hooray! <laughs> this has already been a situation I have survived. Most all will certainly not be arranging such a thing in the future. Abby! That it Abby. doesn't... Ask her if she knows where it went, where the thing went. Yes. Did you see who took it? No. We arrived too late. Are you the only team out here looking for it? Um, she clams up. What might you use to assess her, her, her reaction? Um, again, as an advisor to the king, I had to deal yeah. with a lot of con artists and uh, dubious court fellows to see if they were lying to get why, in. Why, why do you keep talking about Tonstock? No. Um, all right. Uh, uh, right. So uh, make a wisdom roll with your uh, with your advisor to the king and tell me what you get 31 i mean her reaction it, you you read her like a book um no that's later stuff yeah, there, there's no one there's no one coming to help 
her or her team. They were alone. Um, although uh, you do have the sense that that not you did not face the full strength of their their expedition here. Oh, so there's others waiting. Like the expedition uh, came and then this team went out. You want to ask a question? Yeah. Where's your camp? Where are the rest of your worthless followers? Uh, the, the, the damned wolves here. They, they took many of them and uh, our secret weapons. Uh, they've likely broken free. Whatever, whatever mind tricks you used, they, uh, we, we had them wait, awaiting, but uh, the archers, the archers, I don't have control over them anymore. They'll be trying to go home. Who are these archers? The ones from the Maidenstone Mountains, the bizarre freakish monsters. They are the, the greatest mobile artillery that exists in this world. They shot that from the sky. And I... Later, what, what what's she talking about? Would, would my character know? Even though Mark you? Um, you might not, no. I mean, I've heard of the Maiden Star Mountains, I'm sure. Yes. You know that much. Far to the north, near the glacier. She's talking about giants with big bows shooting spear-sized arrows? Something, like that? Yeah. Point to one of those. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 25. Yeah. So we actually okay. talking giants? Yeah. So there are these bizarre creatures uh, from the Maidenstone Mountains. Uh, a strange, but uh, and uh, in some ways uh, uh, hidden. You know, they, they uh, but yes, they are giants. They are, you know, between 10 and 20 feet tall. Uh, and they are bizarrely crafted. They, they are not like like something. They are like a remnant from the gods' times. They have three arms. One grows from where their head should, would normally be. Then they have that they, they have a general form of a of a humanoid, but this arm growing out of their their neck region, uh, a big mouth in their chest, and their eyes are on the backs of their uh, hands, which they use for sighting, and they they fire these enormous bows. They they fire essentially arrows that would be you know like shot from a siege engine, um, uh, and uh, they are known as uh, you know great terrors in uh, in hand to hand combat too. They basically wield a two handed sword and and in each and each. Uh, in two of their three hands and, and, and protect themselves with an enormous shield in the third. Um, however, you know, they, they are known to be mercenaries, but they're not known to really work for the kingdom of war. Uh, from what she said, it sounds like she held some compulsion over them, but lost control. Because you put the whammy on her. We did. <laughs> So your entire force is now shattered and flying to the winds. Shadoobie. Perhaps. My, my vision is clouded on many things, but yes, I think you have scattered us, but, but. Then we will, I suggest we will we will come again. We will never stop. Oh, I think I'm sure back. that you believe that. But for now, I am willing to leave the what remains of your group to the wolves. Um, Whether no. that is Nessalor or Gerald Dogbar, I do not care. No. We have other yeah. things to attend yeah. to. Have a good day. I, I am your prisoner. 
Uh, and you've heard how later, you treated your prisoners. So, uh, the, the, Alaros, do you have any other concerns? We should. Uh, she's acted honorably. She's asked, answered our questions. We should uh, ask the Telmori to be uh, firm but gentle with her so that we can take her back to the city for the elders to question her further. We should also ask the Telmori if they knew of other invaders. Were these the only ones? And uh, if they would show us the graciousness of protecting the crew until we return with our wayward vampires. Well, it, oh. indeed, the Telmori do show up. They, 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 uh, they, uh, they throw the heads of a couple of more troopers that they have uh, finished off. Uh, and uh, they tell tale of some fantastical giants that had three arms and but but seemed to be they I mean they 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 stayed back from the giants because the giants uh, were exceedingly dangerous. I mean they they shoot these enormous arrows uh, that would that go through a man and through a wall and through the next wall uh, anyway uh, but uh, but the giants seem to be just trying to flee, so they uh, followed, but uh, but not uh, engaged them. They will gladly uh, protect the two wounded crewmen, the marine and the crewmen, and uh, hold your prisoners if you promise to come back and and leave soon. We give you our word. That is good. Then we will. Uh, if you do not return, then these, all of these, will, uh, will, will, will feed the the hunger of the chaos wolf. But that should not, that should not be necessary. Yes, it will not. Victory is assured. So you follow later, and his vision of the truth rune, and easily pick your way uh, through to. Uh, the outskirts of a shattered earth temple. Uh, once, uh, once the uh, uh, this was uh, clearly one of the great temples of Dalsard, uh, but it has fallen into ruin. And um, you can sense uh, something terrible within. Um, uh, let's see, we have, there's, someone has a death rune, right? And someone has the moon rune still. Um, uh, and um, uh, something is definitely going on uh, inside the earth temple. Um, but uh, the, um, the sense that you have as you're, uh, have uh, crossed over into the other world before on your past hero quests that just below this earth temple there feels like there's an opening the way that you've gone before into the underworld um, and um, how do you approach I, I will say this is a non-combat. I'm pretty sure this is a non-combat encounter. So feel free to narrate how you want to 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 move forward. But the the this great temple is square shaped in the in the in the uh, image of the earth, and um, and uh, the the broken entryway yawns uh, open. But instead of the life-giving sense of of fertility and uh and uh vigor from the earth you sense the the darker side of it that reaches deep down into the underworld the powers of death and perhaps even corruption from the underworld dwelling up be a good time for that then. yes uh tunstog uh will uh, <clears throat> uses large uh, bolo to cut himself, uh, causing suffering, uh, bleed yes. upon his death rune, 
and say a prayer to Gera, the face of the red moon that represents the suffering of penitents like me, and ask uh, for a guide into the other realm. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, as you feel the power of death flow around you and your companions, uh, you death, which was found originally in the underworld, it 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 calls that sense of the underworld uh, into the your presence, and you can see that the Earth Temple is in fact uh, existing on the margins between life and uh, death. And within your vision is is opened. These creatures that have defied death, these vampires, are within, and they were uh, finishing desecrating this uh, uh, Earth Temple uh, and further opening the uh, the doorway into the the deep and chaotic underworld. Um, and uh, the object of their veneration is this black staff that is uh, uh, projecting power and drawing energy from uh, from below. Um, and uh, they have drawn uh, many runes and many symbols uh, in uh, in uh, the blood of sacrificial victims. Um, all through the the uh, uh, main worship area of the temple, uh, and this this vision is given not just to you but to your your friends, um, and uh, but um, as as the vision fades, you can see that the the members of the Vampire Legion were gathering in a circle around the staff. Uh, their attention completely fixated on it. If you find gentlemen can stall and destroy the entrance to this temple, I can almost guarantee you that I'll get that stat. By yourself? Well, I have a brilliant and cunning plan. Right. So what I have is called resolute action. Uh, and it means I can do one outrageous stunt per battle. It doesn't necessarily like uh, defeat an opponent or anything like that. But uh, for example, I could run across the tops of the heads of, of all the people get the staff and get i won't i won't use the run across their heads example but i gotta get in grab it and get out it's it's one roll and then bad things will happen but if we if we can um if we can destroy the entrance on our way out we may be able to escape with the staff and minimal fighting. These, uh, the, the, the uh, detachment of these vampires have sworn oaths to our emperor. Well, remember, he's not your emperor, but to their emperor, certainly, yes. Um, but yes. It, their, their emperor is different than our emperor? Well, so you're from the you're from these independent provinces. So so your allegiance is to the king of the city state, um, and the the emperor is uh, is the the empire is a parallel polity, shall we say? Um, and uh, there's a complicated relationship between the parent state and the the city states that were spawned from it. But in any case. Um, the, the emperor has shown great friendship, and certainly uh, these legionaries are are bound by oaths uh, to uh, to both 
to follow the uh, the goddess and to her son, the emperor. And the emperor sent this as a gift to us. So why did they steal it? That would be kind of going against what the emperor wanted. Um, and and uh, also the uh, the oaths they have sworn will now be honored is a Yanis Latarnas class feature. So wouldn't wouldn't he be wouldn't uh, Alaros be able to force them to obey their oath to the Red Emperor? Quite possibly. Um, how many can you affect with that at your level with the full moon? Um, you may use a quick ash action to issue a command to induce a target individual to act in accordance with an oath, whether it be an oath of loyalty, enmity, love, or vengeance. Yep. The target may, may resist with a hard save 16 plus. Yep. But actions requiring a role such as disengage, attacking, or other skill roles taken not in compliance with the oath, even after the save, will suffer a minus two penalty and the target takes two points of psychic damage and yep. each new action that does not comply with the oath requires a save until it fails and the target complies. The target dies or the target is released from the oath. Okay. So, so that's one target. Uh, right, target it, doesn't have a cool, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a cool down and I can do three quick actions around. Uh, let's see. If he doesn't do anything else. Yeah. Not sure if I designed that to where it was supposed to be. Uh, a game breaking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it should be a daily, which I probably need to write. Um, so uh, also, rally to my side doesn't state if uh, it's a uh, one use or daily. Yeah. So, but I assume, it may not I say it in the text, but it's a daily. So, um, so, so yeah, you could get uh, one, but um, but you know that might be used then to um, to. Uh, uh, to put the whammy on, you know, some authority person, uh, you know, authority figure uh, among them, maybe when they were, I don't know, chasing Tonstock. Um, okay. So I think we're, a plan is coalescing. Tom, uh, Tom Stock steals the staff. They come after I demand that yeah, the leader of the vampires uh, fulfill their oath and uh, return with us to uh, um, return with us back to the city state to deliver the uh, the staff, and then we have a throwdown with the rest of the vampires. Because even if they kill me, the the leader would have to fulfill his oath, or he would be destroyed. Does that sound good to you guys? Could you, um, by making him fulfill his oath, just make them stand down? Um, yes, because, but... Um, because if, because if, he, if he gives a command, one simple command, I think it'll go... But if, if he has to command them to move and rejoin this army and whatever it seems it seems complex but if they just stop chasing us we're good and and really their their rebellion is is the empire's uh problem not necessarily yours your your job is you have to get the staff true story So my plan is just let's uh, let's get through one or two rounds so the escalation die is high and then 
kill it. Well, it's a full moon, so it's going to start. At two. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to roll initiative. Well, what I'm going to do is that abject failure again, because I get that twice a day. So there's a die sitting there for you guys. And then I'll make a move. Then I'll do the resolute thing to make a move on the one. And I, I, I can also increase your initiative, too. So hopefully you can move before then. But you're, you're minus six to initiative, right? Yeah. I'm pretty much always supposed to go last. But again, the, the, this is... This is more narrative than combat, I think. Oh, great! We'll do some, we'll do some, we'll do some dice rolling. But, uh, but uh, first, if you would give me a uh, a roll, um, obviously you can use your uh, your uh, your dice uh, um, power. But uh, give me. Uh, we're first going to look for you know what what role would you use to sneak into a cursed Earth temple. Oh, uh, I, I'm going to use, um, ah, um, I'm going to use con man okay. and do my best vampire impersonation and just walk it. I'm one of you guys. Uh, oh, is this where the vampire meeting is? I'm sorry. I'm late. I didn't get the e vampire i'm not on the list of the other vampires and so by the time it anyway happy to be here now give me a roll would would, would i be able to use my empowerment of the moon room to help him to give off uh, a radiate uh, a radiate an unlife like a, a a darkness or maybe not darkness but lunar oh. Oh. association the, the the moon is malleable and can give off so many different uh, 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 different emanations with through its glamour. So absolutely 100%, uh, okay. you can craft the moon rune to to make him look and appear like a vampire. Vampire. Now let's see well, if he I, carries I it off. Yeah, I'll do my emanation to to, okay. to give him that. All right. What's your roll there, Tansak? All together, it will be 22. All right. You are selling it. You walk in the circle. They are, uh, the, the, the force from the staff is, um, is uh, it, it, it's almost debilitating the, the, the unlife and, and uh, depth of, um, You can only name it maybe corruption that the, is uh, radiating from it. Um, but boy, you walk right in, they don't even blink. Um, uh, so uh, what kind of role for your, uh, for your fantastic, um, uh, and then you know, let's roll it and then you tell me what happens. Okay, um, I am going to use my background as a riverboat trader for this role, okay. which is to say, on a riverboat, you must be very nimble. Uh, you must be able to evade things coming at you and ropes and all of that. So I uh, and using my resolute action skill to do an amazing feat uh, that is uh, impossible normally, um, I'm going to try to grab the wand. And that role will be... Oh no, wrong thing. Uh, no, that that can't be true. All right. Uh, Fourteen plus the, 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 the four and eleven is fifteen. So twenty nine. All right. Uh, yeah. You just suddenly. The staff is in your hand. What do you do? Ah, uh, so um, I, there is a, uh, I'm sure there was some sort of altar 
or a thing that the staff was yes. placed on. Yes. All right. Uh, so I have grabbed the staff, uh, jumped up uh, uh, high uh, upon the altar with the staff uh, above my head, um, and I, <laughs> um, um, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, oh, right. It was nice to see you all. I will leave you now with uh, a card for a good dentist and this bouquet of garlic. Goodbye. And I will... <laughs> he does a uh, he does a forward flip, uh, kicks off the shoulders of a vampire, uh, and then does a dive roll uh, to a kip up. Uh, beyond the uh, swarm of vampires and just at the edge of his compatriots, and he uh, presents the staff. Uh, I assume that uh, later is the most appropriate person to take the staff? Uh, you said it radiates corruption? Maybe you should keep it, Tom Stag. I'll keep it. All right, so I'm, just, right. I'm okay. moving. I'm just okay. running. So... I should just say so as you as you do this and as you leave the circle of vampires and they're all completely shocked uh there are wild bursts of of uh of uh, black energy that that shoot everywhere and uh they it uh, it goes into each of the vampires they're all uh hurt by this you also take 50 points of damage um so Huzzah! You know, as you you are suffering suffering uh, quite appropriately. Uh, you Forty-two out, left, baby. We're getting there. <laughs> and uh, and you cross into into the sunlight of the the late afternoon, and uh, and just you glance back, and and indeed all of the vampires are just behind you, but they are holding back uh, because while. Uh, it seems that when they were in possession of the staff, they were uh, empowered. They know that if they step out into the sunlight, they will be much weakened. Um, but uh, the the one wears the uniform of a um, of a of a lunar tribune, um, and uh, and and there he is, the commander of this detachment, Alaros. You have something to say to him. Tribune, I am an adept of the College of Many Arts. I demand that you fulfill your oath to the emperor. You will stay here with these leeches and you will wait for the emperor's judgment to be brought upon you. And, and um, you, you, you can tell that he does not want to do that and yet he is compelled to do so. And he waves the others back. And uh, as the as the lingering uh, tendrils of power of, of death, which the vampires fear above almost all else because it, it means the true death for them, and the uh, the strains of the moon, which which resonate with the the oaths that they broke in seeking the power of the staff, uh, and they they fade back into the temple, cursing you. There the oath breakers not. Look out the one you call Blade, the Daywalker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um and uh later. Tonstag is holding what appears to be something from your knowledge and research uh, of this region uh, is the staff of Aransor. Aransor was an ancient wizard, uh, and it is the key to a, uh, a mysterious place called the, the Gate of Banir. And uh, many horrible monsters which obeyed Aransor came through that gate 
and uh, were used in terrible battles uh, many ages ago. And now you guys got it and uh, just have to take it back to, to the College of Many Arts and what could possibly go wrong. Now, Tonstad the Tormented wields the sword of open saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the box completely broken and we can't put it back in? Uh, no, the box could be, could be uh, patched up, shall we say. Yeah, I think we should return started. to the crash site, put it in the box, gather up our prisoners, and return. And this time, let's yes. take the river home. It's faster, and it flows that way. This is all true. I don't think we have a boat to take the river. I have friends. We have nice horses and a mule. Yeah, it, yeah, it says the guy riding on the horse. And the next time you get on the mule. Are you, we, are you talking bad about Seamus? Because he'll hear. Oh, it's my fault. Sorry, my fault. All right. We have we have we have two uh injured lunars plus we have two prisoners or just one? Yes. Yeah. So we can That's double up on the horses and you know and make it back with just three additional people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, someone can ride my mule. I'll I'll walk beside Seamus. I don't deserve to ride him. It's true. Sorry, true. Seamus. I was talking bad about you. So uh Evan, you are yes. Question here. Um with the wreckage of the moonship, can we build out a travi or two yes. for the injured or a sledge that we can hook the horses up to and just drag it all. Absolutely. And with the clever hands, even though you once were a gold dwarf, uh, still the, the art of making is in your very fiber and, uh, and you know how to do these things. So yes, indeed. Uh, and all of this is accomplished, and uh, it is uh, a, um, you know, it is not a hell for leather uh, ride back to East Point. It is uh, more of a trying to find the least bumpy and, uh, and uh, you know, gentle paths. And uh, you do have to spend one night out sleeping rough uh, under the stars on the banks of the river. But uh, soon the uh, gleaming walls of your great city uh, come into view, and uh, and uh, you know, outriders uh, 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 carry word ahead of you of uh, of your return, and uh, you um, you uh, you bring your wounded, your prisoners, and the great prize sent from the emperor to the College of Many Arts. And uh, you are all um, welcome with uh, with uh, fanfare. Uh, although, uh, as your story is told, there is um, there is some dismay, uh, obviously, at the uh, at the perfidy of the uh, the emperor's guards that were sent along. Uh, that the kingdom of war almost intercepted this and uh further that you know the box was open at, at all but uh nonetheless your success is uh is met with reward feasting and uh and uh and rest um before you are uh, called upon to carry out uh, additional duties um uh uh, for the greater glory of uh, of the moon and uh, your your city state of East Point, congratulations! Oh, I'll, I'll be sure to follow, right? point out the sacrifice and and worthy work of Tom Stag and how he bravely leapt in amongst the vampires. He's one step closer. Yeah. You're not, you're not helping. It's supposed to be mean to me. 
<laughs> Very good. Now, now go under the stairs and here's your gruel. <laughs> oh, great. I shall remove the nettles and briars from my shoes and prepare tonight's soup. Excellent. Well, uh, you've all been very, uh, you've all been great. And uh, I think uh, we have uh, come to a close on this. Uh, I appreciate you all. Um, uh, let me run this. It was a, it was a blast. Absolutely. Thank oh, you, Evan. Thank you for running. It was loads of fun. Glad, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, thank you. you. It. If anybody has any final things, thoughts that they want to share with the audience, and otherwise we'll just get ready to close down. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, let's keep an eye open for the escalation episode or uh, edition. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's more than one. Hopefully it's an ongoing endeavor. <laughs> I think if we manage to get this special issue out, when, not if, when we get it out, um, everybody will be in, entitled to a long rest. But uh, but yes, I hope that it won't be the last <laughs> that we put out. Yeah, you, you set a really high bar for anything that comes after this. Oh, uh, you are too kind, but thank you. And uh, audience out there, we are Iconic Production. This has been a special exploring 13th age in Glorantha. You can catch me and JM on Exploring Glorantha soon. And uh, please check out all the other uh, excellent uh, uh, endeavors that these fine people are, are a part of, uh, both for uh, iconic production and uh, also for um, uh, their uh, streaming shows four nights a week. Um, and you should definitely check them out. There's a Patreon. For, uh, iconic and if uh, you want to um, get in on the action and uh, support uh, some real quality work by uh, amazing creative uh, individuals um, consider that uh, I should also mention that while we highlighted at the, the beginning all of the many contributors to our fun and games none of them endorse this and we are not sponsored by any of them it, if if they're upset it's my fault and uh, and uh, our players were uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, I want to thank them all and uh, and thank you all for your kind attention. And hopefully we'll see you again exploring Goantha. Absolutely. Bye.